Oh, hi everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Through Hells and Back. Um, before we get started, please check out our opening links, which includes all of the places you can find us and interact with us online and our community, including Discord, Twitter, YouTube, places you can support us like Streamlabs, Redbubble, and Patreon. Please do check them out. Also, check out our sponsors. Uh, we have new sponsors in the deck of many. Uh, check out their, uh, their, their website, where they currently have a promotion running on their deck of many animated spells, which are like spells that spell as you spell, like they cast spells as you like play them uh which are really cool um you may know them from the deck of many things uh popular card from in the game um also check out mage hand press who are other sponsors we play their dark matter 5e expansion in space on thursdays in the show before this one uh so uh check out those as well also ignore the tweet that i've linked there because that is not the tweet the tweet that i will be tweeting will be tweeting in the tweet in just a second uh hey brie why don't you introduce everyone Hey everyone, how are y'all doing today? It's me, DM Bree. I'm so excited to drag these folks through hell. We are going into uh, Minoris today, the next layer, the third layer of hell. So excited for our viewers today, but we are going to start with our reoccurring cast member, our wonderful friend, Avery. Hello! Yes, I'm Avery. I go by Matt but online. I'm an artist and cosplayer who currently has commissions open. Um, I'm playing Thistle, who is a Disley forest gnome paladin who uh, is, I guess, trying to trying to herd this uh, the centaur uh, of a cleric around the hells without us getting killed too much, without trying to start too many wars, which didn't go too great last session. <laughs> it feels no. like that sometimes. So it'd be like that sometimes when you've got a French holy centaur. Sometimes it'd just be that way. Um, next up, uh, one of our first viewers of the day. So excited to have you here. Who are you and who are you playing, my dear friend, Allie? Hi, um, I am a super nerd. I do nothing but play D&D. And I'm playing Larry Rowan. She is a high elf monk. Uh, she is sassy and enjoys the party. Hell yeah. I bet she's going to be super excited to be dragged through the swamps of Minoris. You're going to love it. It's going to be gross and slimy. Um, next up, we have another one of our wonderful, wonderful viewers today joining us. Our dear friend, uh, Sifa? Sifa? Sifa. Yes, Sifa, are hey you guys. Sifa? Uh, I'm Sifa. Uh, I'm a mom. I'm a writer. I'm an artist. Um, today I am playing Tia. Tia Trueblood. She is a she is a a rogue, a tiefling rogue. Very suspicious. Very much a bit of a kleptomaniac if you're not careful. So watch your valuables. Nothing to worry about in this party. No valuables to be had. A bunch of poor holy folk. Um, last but not least, I hope you're ready, Scrat, because it's all on you, man. Oh, hi. Yeah, uh, I play uh, <clears throat> Dan de Leon. Uh, I'm very excited to be back uh, with our centaur uh, through hell. It's... Uh... It's a, it's a good time. I honestly, uh, I don't remember any bad things happening last time. I believe we went and went through a portal to the next plane and there was uh, Thank you, dear. no issues whatsoever. Thank you. Fissel was, whatsoever. Fissel was grumbling about something, but I'm fairly sure we didn't make any enemies or lasting impressions on anybody. Well, with that information, I guess I'll jump into the previously on so we can kind of see who was really right in that scenario. Um, last time we played, our players were traveling through the city of Dis, and uh, they went down the spiral staircase from Avernus into the entry room where they take the passport and contract information. Um, the two holy, uh, between Thistle and Dan, <laughs> They did not, uh, they made a very much so lasting impression on the woman in charge of putting the information in and were immediately set into the waiting room with two other individuals, um, Abyssalon and Vorval. Um, they made fast friends with them as they were dragged into the courtyard to be murdered um, by an incubus and a succubus. But fortunately they were able to dispatch them quickly and go on the hunt for their next piece. Uh, they were looking for Marisa, um, Marisa the succubus but they did not know that at the time they went on a hunt through city streets made friends with some urchins and homeless folk 
through the ways of gold, uh, their bodies stuck to the hot metal of the city streets. But they managed to find their way into the Tavern of Marisa, full of beautiful women and horse flymen. They were able to find Marisa, who uses magics of deception. Um, she was friendly enough at first that she had one of the pieces of the amulet of the plains. But unfortunately, uh, Dan was not going to play the... Dan was going to use as much holy magic as possible to have a very good conversation with Marisa. And she didn't like that one bit. And she transformed him into a sheep, a saving throw he would have made if their friend Abyssal and the Tiefling did not help assist Marisa in this attack. Um, once transformed into a sheep, um, Abyssal was able to con this woman and it was able to get the one piece of the Amulet of the Plains with that Vorvil casted from a magical skull of fear where they all ran for their lives out of the city of Dis upon entering a portal to lead them to the next layer of hell. And with that, Dan and Thistle both wake up in a cavern, laying on what feels like algae. It's wet in this small cavern. There's a wall to one side, a cutoff, and the rest leads them into deeper murky water. It smells abhorrent. Cave bats flutter around in this small tunnel. Ugh. I do not remember going to sleep, do you? <laughs> no. Uh, I'm just kind of... I imagine this, this is like up to pretty much waist level to thistle. <laughs> not yet, not yet, but every step you not take, it does go deeper. Every move we make? Every step you take. <laughs> yeah, this will just kind of gets up and just tries to get... Their armor and gear is already pretty mucky, but this doesn't feel particularly pleasant. So they're just up, like, trying to get it off. off do of either of you have so it... dark vision? I do. Ooh, so, I <laughs> Thistle, you would see this as you're kind of wiping off what feels like algae off of your armor as best as you can. You look down and it, whatever this thick viscous fluid is, is a reddish brown chunks of flesh as you wipe it off into the back into this sea of rotting corpses. I just kind of look down my hand, just look down. It's like, you know what? I'm not even surprised anymore. What can you it's see? Kind of lost. Are we in a, How... a fish tank, perhaps? I just kind of take whatever like the clear's hand is and just kind of pat. Pat dead bicep, be like, yeah, yeah, oh, we're pleasant. a wonderful aquarium. <laughs> don't, just don't, don't you think about it too much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there is a. Oh, it's not hard. Not hard. He's an easy man. To, he's an easy person to please. Uh, they're they're quite easy. Um, as they make their way down, I suppose this will this will. I don't know. Are you leading? I hope so. I guess, yeah. Do, yeah. Does do you have dark vision or no? No, I do not. <laughs> um, as... Yeah, I'll, I'll take. I guess. I guess even take Dan's hand to make sure that they go the right way and like guide them to the best spots for their deeply hooves. As you lead them through this tunnel, you begin to see a green, murky light. Um, it doesn't seem like an actual light itself, but kind of just an eerie glow. And as you make it to the mouth, the, the fluid is about up to halfway to your waist. And as you step over, you feel a drop off that will probably go up to maybe your chest. You're not sure. But you can then see the outline of this new plane. Dead trees stand over this marshy bog as far as the eyes can see. Mixtures of rotting earth and rotting flesh float in a sea of swampy water. There are a few paddle boats as people travel through. But it seems quite gross. The cavern walls go about 200 feet in the air and in the distance you see large chains attached to a pillared 
city of sorts, about six miles to the distance. But one of these paddle boats begins to make their way through. And it has two people on there, one tiefling, one high elf. And they seem to be fishing through this water with nets, pulling up gunk bones. And one pulls out the tiefling, a platinum fork. They seem to be looking for treasure. Uh, what you got there? Just a fork. I mean, what's it's it made platinum. Of? I mean, that's a nice fork. You should save it. Yeah, I guess so. Well, the shine should be okay. All right, let's see. You find anything? Did I find anything? Yep. You pull through the sludge, and as you do, you lift it over your head, and you see a skull rotted and carved, perhaps of a orc or half-orc, and one tusk is plated with a gold topper. But as you kind of look at its glisten in the distance, you see a... Is that a horse? Is that an individual? There is someone there in a small form, perhaps a child, at the distance of a small cavern beside. My baby. Your baby. My baby. Child. I mean, I found this, and I show her the skull, but also I found that, and I point up to where I see the small child. Huh. Okay, let me take a look at the skull real quick. So it's just a tooth here. Yeah, pretty shiny. I guess we can yeah, do something I mean, with that. I guess we can do something with that. If it, the child, where? Yeah. I mean, look, look up in the distance. You don't see you that. See, you see what seems to be someone riding a horse and a child from the murky distance. That's weird. What do you think? I mean, you don't often see children here. Yeah, that's true. Not in the middle of the swamp, I don't think so. What, it doesn't need help in the middle of the swamp? Well, I guess we can go over and ask if you want to, but uh, it could be a little bit dangerous, what do you think? I mean, small child, hell, I feel like it's just the right thing to do. And I mean, we can just dispose of her if she's able. Okay, how about if you go ahead and you go ahead and take a look at it and I'll be your backup. Yeah, why not? That works. Okay. Alaria, you can move forward on your small paddle boat with standing on it with your small pile of treasure and bones. And you can make your way and as you get closer, you begin to realize as you can see the formations of their face that this is not a child. And this is not a person riding a horse. These seem to be two adventurers, definitely adults. That is not a child. And that is, what in the, that looks like Hi. trouble. Are we in like- Are you just gonna say hi? Are you just gonna say hi? Yes, by the time that you can actually see their faces and that they are not children or horse riding individuals, they are within speaking distance of you. This all, Dan, you see a high elven woman and what do you look like? I have black hair, long black hair, straightened, or well, not straightened, but straight, um, bright green eyes, very tall, um, on the slenderer side, but with minor musculature. And I'm holding, um, well, a fork. <laughs> You're not a small child at all. No. If I say that I am, are you more likely to help me? No. I mean, then mildly. no. <laughs> then maybe. Do you mind? Mm. Is there more room in that boat of yours? This is a bit of a. I just kind of looked down at the swamp, swamp slash rotting corpses that is uh, at least between my chest and my waist right now. So. Oh. You got room for at least one more on there. I mean, I suppose, but you're gonna have to be clean before you get on my boat. Are you sure that's gonna be a good idea? We don't even know these people. Ah, eh, why not? Little adventure. Come on, live a little. Not to be rude, but I kind of agree with your friend there. We are kind of. <laughs> nah, it's Name's fine. Thistle, by the way. Hi, uh, Hilaria. 
Hello, I am Dan de Leon. I cannot see you, but I'm very excited to meet you. You can see them now with this murky green light kind oh. of floating around the air. You can see this high elf woman and you can now see that the slush that you are murking through is not just water as an arm kind of floats by you. Oh. Well, come on, Tia. We can let them in. Look at them. They're gross. Okay, but I'm watching them. That's fair. I'm watching them. I'm watching them. All right. Get your hands off our stash and we'll be good. Yeah, agreed. Um, but again, you must be clean before you get on here because, I mean, I've spent a lot of time not getting all of that in here. So um, just come on up and as they come, or are you guys coming up? Because as you come up, I'm just going to press the digital table for you. <laughs> Yeah, I was about to ask, like, do any of you have a spell for that? <laughs> I do not. Because I don't. <laughs> Should I get in the boat too? I mean, I'm... I have oh, yeah. what is known in the profession as an equine build. Ooh, hey, there are no human... Oh, yes. Um, Maybe you should just walk with us? The last time I got in a boat, I fell out. Yeah, I don't want you to fall out, and I don't want us to fall out with you. Oh. I Goodness. suppose you can just Thank hang you. on to the side? <laughs> hang on to the side, don't float away. I can yeah. Gunas, thank you so much for that subscription. You have an advantage to gift a player of your choice. Let us know who. Uh, y yes, I will. I will. I will walk along the side. That is perfect. I wonder though. I am not interested in your stash unless it has one official. Is this the mistake I made last time? Is what? <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, it's like, well, it's a bit late now because you got the curiosity up. Uh, essentially, we're looking for uh, pieces of a pendant. Okay. Uh, anything pendant. like that. Yeah, pretty important looking thing. But it's pretty, uh, what's a, uh, what's the pendant look like? Yeah. Uh, kind of like uh, this. <laughs> that's the part that we should probably be a bit more careful about. Uh, <laughs> oh. When... That's a fancy pendant. It okay. is fancy. Tia, it is rare looking hmm. it's broken though it seems that it is missing quite a few pieces you think that if it had all of the pieces it would it would fetch a very pretty penny just about mm -hmm. anywhere in the city what are you doing? Uh, so let me get this straight you're looking to this is kind of like a pieces of a puzzle and you're trying to find the pieces and put this thing back together yes sell it and what are you planning to do with this thing? I mean, get home, hopefully. Are you carrying it around? Are you planning on selling it? Or are you planning on giving it to somebody? Is this a job for somebody? Or We are planning to collect all the pieces and then take it back to our plane. Back to your plane? Wait, wait, you're not yeah. from here. No. Uh, okay. I thought we kind of gave off the tourist vibe, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> a bit, a little bit. Just a little bit, yeah. Well, I mean, then again, I'm not from here either, so... Well... I imagine most aren't, right? Not from here, but... Been here for a little bit. Huh. So, would you mind helping us uh, maybe look for it? Or keep an eye out for it, at least? Yeah, what do you think? I mean, I suppose, but what are we getting out of this deal? We're giving you a ride on the boat, we're helping you find your trinkets. I mean, it kind of seems like a one-way street here. Yep, I agree with her. Do you often find yourself injured when you are doing your missions? I mean, on occasion. I, I don't get hit often. <laughs> Tia and uh, Larry, you would know that occasionally there are things that rise from this bog. Unsettling and unsightly things that rise from this bog. On second thought, it would be nice not to die down here. I am yeah. very good at stopping people from dying. Very good. I mean, not dying is my favorite pastime. Uh, Tia, I mean, I'm feeling okay about You're that. You're a cleric then. I am, yes. How did you know? You said healer. There you go. You get off that cleric vibe. <laughs> I'm like literally, I, I'm a, a centaur, yeah, but I'm in like 
vestments <laughs> like, <laughs> with bloodied hands on one side and you know well i guess I they can be useful i think yeah. they can be useful yeah yeah we're Let's pretty go good ahead. at making sure people don't die whether it be preventing something from hitting you in the first place just kind of justice to myself or uh just healing you up after you've been hit you know prevention versus cure kind of deal i like it that's a pretty good plan and if your enemies happen to be undead, I can make them do a little circle. I do feel like we might come across undead enemies down here. Oh, we're in a swamp. Go figure. Yeah. All right. Still watching you guys, so. Okay. Still watching you guys. Okay. Watching me too. It's fine. <laughs> I will like sort of flick my hair a little bit. I quite like being watched. And and you step down by this boat, Dan, and it rises up to right around your human waist, completely oh. covering the first half of your body under this deep sludge. And it's easy for you to walk through, but you do kick bones, weapon. You, you just kind of move through probably the stuff that they're searching through treasure for. And when you do begin to walk through it, I would like you to roll me a D100, please. Yeah. As long as you roll a certain number, you're fine. Oh wow, they've added that, that's... They... Uh -oh. Great, that is all of D and D. <laughs> <laughs> they've added a D one hundred to the uh roll twenty dice roller, that's cool. Oh yeah. Sixty three. I have nerves. <laughs> As you begin to move and they paddle this boat deeper into this giant expanse of this seemingly endless cavern, I would like you to roll me a DC 15 constitution saving throw. You have a plus two to that. Thank you. Because of my aura of protection. Don't you, do you have any advantage? I do have one advantage. I'm going to hold it because I've only got the one. You don't need it. It's fine. You'll roll. Oh. Oh, thanks. Uh oh. <laughs> Damn. No, I'm glad I didn't burn my advantage on that, though. It wouldn't have helped, you know? Yeah, it would not have helped. So, as you walk through and you're kind of kicking up your legs to try and move through this, a bit of the sludge bounces into your face and it hits your eye. Oh. Oh, that's not. Oh, God. Oh, Ouch. God. I can you all see it. Away. Um. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> And it burns. Ah. It feels like that time I got chili in my eye. And when you wipe it out and you get it all out of your eye, but your eye still remains blurry. And could you roll me a D6? Actually, no. You're good. But you will take a minus one to all attack rolls and ability checks. Ouch. How rude. Uh, okay. Ow. All right there. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm okay. All I, right, good. I mean, it looks like it's getting a little red. It is looking red, and uh, you actually see one single tear of blood drip from the eye. Can Alira, I and, Ow. you would, you would know as someone who does not like this sludge. You've put a lot of time into keeping yourself clean and knowledge of the cleanliness. So I'm gonna have you roll me a either nature or medicine with advantage, and I can tell Ooh. you what you know about this. That's exciting. I will go with a medicine, so a 17. With a 17, you would know that he has sight rot. Oh. And the only way to cure this is with a flower called the eyebright. Um, so I have good news and bad news. Which would you prefer? Uh, you know, I think we will start with the bad news because I always like to have good news after some bad news. Well, that's great because the bad news is you have, um, it's called eye rot and it's getting worse. It looks awful. Um, the oh. good news is we can cure it with um, hey. a, yes, it, it's called eye bright. We just have to find some of that. Yeah. Um, do, do we know where that we don't know a what that is and b where that occurs. I guess we are kind of in the middle of a uh, nowhere. Womp. 
That is a good point. Um, would I know where I we where we could find it or if it's if, common? If you were to find it, it would be to the west, a good ways travel on a small marshy island held by the Aracocra Witch Maze. So I think a, a witch owns it on an island to the west. Um, does that a witch? Yeah. Um, how long does high rot usually last? Um, it just continues to grow worse until the eye rots off. Oh, yeah. And if we don't get that fixed, your eye's just going to, like, pop out, fall out. It's not going to be good. Oh. I, I don't... Is that is that where it stops? Like, once that eye's gone, is it done? Like, or does eye rot kind of turn into, like, a body rot kind of deal? It will continue to rot and rot, and rot. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, we might want to help you get that before we help you get the amulet so you don't rot away. <laughs> Glad one of us is chipper about this. Oh, I always try to have a good mood, you know. I mean, we are in hell. Might as well have something positive, right? Like me. Positive. Well, it's good that somebody's well. positive. So we go looking right. for this flower then. Uh -huh. To the west. Uh -huh. Those kind of look pitiful. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's see what we can do here. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can find this uh, island with the flower and the witch. Yeah. Wonderful. This, uh, this witch to the west, are they pleasant? Maybe a whimsical witch of the west? And oh, now you have eye rot in witch. all of your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> which which is which? Which which goes which? All right. I doubt this witch is whimsical from the sound of it. Uh -huh. Don. And who will be in charge of paddling this boat? You only need one person to paddle. If you'd like, two can do it to make it go faster. Or if you just want one, two folks can use the... You can search for treasure while you travel. I'm okay with that. As long as you give me directions, I can paddle. I'm pretty sure. I'll help paddle. Okay, then. Tia I'll will continue. do what Tia does best. I'll continue looking for treasure, then. All right. Uh, you can roll me three D100s. Three D100s. All right, here we yes. go. And then give me each individual one. All right. Uh, let me find my D100s. Mm -hmm. something good, Tia. Okay, here we go. One. So this is what's wrong with D one hundred. Yes. Okay. Okay, we have uh thirty. Uh twenty and an eighty. Okay. As you make your way to the witch, your first scoop is heavy and it feels like a pouch and you pull oh. it out and it is a pouch of gold containing 120 gold pieces. There we go. Here we go. Cool. Okay. Your There's 120. Your second pull seems to be the rotted arm of a, hmm, is it a goblin? Maybe you can't tell, but it's very shriveled. Is there anything on this arm, like any there, jewelry, any kind of, or is it just the arm? There is a piece of jewelry. There is a ring on it. It looks like a brass okay. piece worth twenty-five gold. Okay, I'll go ahead and take that ring then. And with your final pull, it is heavy. It is too heavy for you to pull out by yourself. Okay, You're I'm gonna stuck. need some help with this. I don't know what this is, but it's heavy. Hold You're gonna on, need to I can give you a hand. Okay. I help her pull it up. And as you hoist it out, it is glowing. Ooh. And Thistle, the glow catches your eye immediately as they pull out the hilt of a weapon. Oh. Ooh, um, uh, what, you, what you got there? Looks like uh, a weapon hilt. 
Is it like to a sword or to a knife? How big is this thing? It is quite large. And as you see, first it is a handle wrapped in a smooth leather. Though it looks like it's been held many times and it is sat in this rotting, festering liquid. Huh. It is in wonderful condition. And as you grab it and you use your all of your strength to pull out this great axe, it is made of what seems to be a shiny brass that glows through the murk. And it is in the shape of a great sun with a smiling face in the center of it. This, old, wow. this weapon looks very familiar to you. Very yeah, fancy. I always, I just like, I almost dropped the oar and like kind of bring it, points it back. I was like, I, I know that you found it and everything. Can I, can I look at that, please, real quick? Oh, take a look at it. Go ahead. Just, Here we go. Yep. Yeah. So I take this. <laughs> you are oh, holding Light's of... Fury, an axe you have well wielded many times. It has a gentle glow to it. And when you say a command word of your choice, it will glow radiantly. And you know that when it is glowing, what you do is a bonus action. You can swing this weapon, and as it, it hits a fiendish creature, it does 1d6 extra radiant damage. It is a plus one X. You know this. That does not mean it is currently yours in possession. Yeah, you I know this, <laughs> as you have wielded it many times in war. Yeah. Look familiar to you. Yeah, yeah this is going to this is gonna sound like a, ro- a load of bull, but uh, this just kind of turns turns it around in, a, in their hands. Like... This, this, I, I've used this weapon, and I use this weapon a lot. This used to be mine. How did it end up in the map? You lose uh, it? Beats, beats me. Essentially, when I kind of got sent down to hell, I kind of got stripped of all of my fancy palette and stuff. Um, I thought they just kind of kept it up on, on the material plane, but apparently not. So, your stuff might be all over the place, then. Listen, I just kind of, when I got here, I kind of had it all penned to be gone forever, to be honest, but I guess maybe. That's a nice axe. I mean, it was, the, it is a nice axe. I Very nice it. axe. It's kind of, I feel like, especially because Dia and you both knew the weight of it, Thistle's wielding this thing, which is bouncy. I'm saying, like, yeah, yeah. It feels like, a, like, like <laughs> she bounces it like a dagger. Lord. Wow. I mean, <laughs> I get the sense that you've wielded it before. Considering you're so small, it's so big, you're handling it quite well. It's like a landfill down here. I wonder. Yeah, you can find a whole lot of yeah. stuff, like axes. Yeah. And you have found various magical items in here in the past, both of you. You've sold them and made pretty penny. You live pretty well for two people in hell. A lucrative business. And you actually see other people as they travel to the boats doing the same thing. It's quite common practice that the people skilled enough to fight the creatures in the marsh. Um, listen, I know that you're the ones who kind of found it, but do you think we could all gotta, do you think I could keep this? I mean, I'm happy to, I, I'm happy to, oh, it's I mean, too heavy it'll help me, me protect to, you. It's too heavy for me to lift. So. Wouldn't do me much good either. You sure? I do better with smaller weapons. I will say it would have been nice to get the coin for it, but... Yeah, that's true. You do look like you really like it, and... You know. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. If I happen to find any coin in here, it's all yours. I think this is all of the Orton. I think that's fair. That's fair. Okay. I can keep my my hooves out for, uh... If I come across any sacks or anything. Okay. Bone. Do you really okay. need to... Oh god. Uh... Bone. Fleshy bone. If you feel a lot of bones, eventually though you do feel a few strange things like a helmet here, something there, and you can kind of scoop it up with your mace so you don't actually touch it or use your spiritual weapon or whatever magical means and you can start piling little trinkets up there as you go trying to avoid your <laughs> eyes from getting yeah i'm gonna keep my eyes like very up i'm sort of like fishing down like this <laughs> i i'll uh, yeah i'll yeah hmm. uh i'll uh but i'll, I'll be just like and i'll just be holding them up like uh, how about this one 
No. Anything this... shiny and interesting. <laughs> no. This one. <laughs> it's just skulls. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. This one has an interesting crack on it. <laughs> oh. Uh... No. Nah. You might want to wash your hands after that. Uh... Yeah, you don't want to kind of get like hand rot. Is that a thing? Can you get like eye rot? Hair? Is there a rot for? There are body? various diseases in so this. So many rot. There's various diseases of different sorts you could realistically contract throughout this. Listen, it's not like these aren't like collector's cards. You can't just keep collecting all these rots. So, <laughs> I mean, he could. Probably wouldn't last yeah, long, but he could. <laughs> Be an interesting way to go. I have made bad choices. Yep. It's oh kind of nod sagely. <laughs> uh, uh, and I'm just here taking a look, sorting through all the stuff that we've that we've found. See if there's anything um, else of And you're kind of just piling value. up gold piles, like one gold, you know, a few copper. You could get like maybe three gold. And you're slowly kind of piling up. You'd say this is a probably one of your better days as you help as this port can, is physically feeling through the sludge for you. So mm -hmm. you're not kind of wasting your time as much while you're fishing through. They're like good luck charms. It, hey. it, is very, it is very lucky. And as you begin to see this island and you see a, a hut with a bone fence made around it with strange livestock shuffling around. Dan, you feel something grab your ankle? Um, do horses have ankles? I mean, I guess I do, yes. I guess so. Is that what I they're think called? They do, but it's kind of weirdly. Sh I don't know. Yeah, it's really, really. Really. It's kind of like a bumpy <laughs> kind of thing. Anyone know horses? Anyone know horses? <laughs> Something I mean, grabs your ankle. Not gets caught, but you feel the fingers grab. Oh. Uh, something is grabbing my ankle. Are you sure? Can you feel uh, things on those legs? Yes. As far as I'm aware. Uh, yes, mean, it, it, it's it's gripping quite tightly. Just grabbing you or just grabbing and trying to pull you? Am I being pulled? It is just kind of holding you in place. And as it does, you can see, Alaria, on your side of the boat, skeletal fingers reaching from the water and grabbing onto the side of the boat. Oh, that makes sense. That checks out. Um, skeleton. Uh oh. And I point. <laughs> oh. Start whacking them with my oar. And as you kind of poke at it, a bony horns rise from the sea or the, oh boy. the swamp, and a large skeletal minotaur rises from behind you, Dan. You see a strange gruesome beast multiple chunks of human body formed together like some sort of kind of in the shape of a man misshapen as the pieces don't all fit together but they all seem sewn in a very strange and disgusting way some form of golem of sorts and i would like everyone to roll me in a strip. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Hang on. Oh, really? Jeez. One brand. Okay. What's, what do you got, Tia? Two. <laughs> nice. Ouch. Not quite a one. Not quite a one, but I have a two. Uh, I rolled a seven. This one is a seven. And I rolled a nine. Hey. Why, wow. guys? Why? <laughs> I mean, it just checks Double out, digits you know? don't know her. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it's okay. her? <laughs> wow. Can maybe the maybe the Minotaur skeleton can do better? Why? Hey. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So Tia, Tia still goes last, but first up in the turn order is Illyria. Oh my, um, I am going to take out my quarterstaff 
as my bonus action. Um, am I within melee range of um, the creature? You are in melee range of the Minotaur. Minotaur. I'm going to use my action then to strike at it twice with uh, two handed with my um, quarter staff. Excellent. 25 for the first one. That'll hit. And twelve for the second. That will just hit. Right. Wow. That is awesome. Um, so that is two handed two D eight. God, my dice are running away from me. Seventeen damage total. Okay, excellent. Now, Thistle and Dan, who has the higher dex? I have you minus two. First. You go first, Thistle. Alrighty, okay. yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go to the side of the boat where this Minotaur skeleton is, and I'm just gonna try and, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna try and cleave this thing. Uh, I'm, wait, this I'm not, act yeah, I'm not gonna activate anything yet. Let me just clear that off. Woof. The first does not What's hit. This? Haven't, haven't used this act in a while. Alrighty, uh, I'll use my second attack as well. There we go. You kind of shake off the muck and you get one good swing into the creature. Alrighty, I'm going to pump one level of Divine Smite into that. Excellent. Woof. Hmm? Very good. Damage. Yeah, that's right. Awesome. And um, this is an undead. It's not a fiend, right? Correct. Alrighty, so it's 2d8 then. Yeah. Here we go. Alrighty. And you smash into it, Dan. Behind you is a flesh golem. Oh. It is gross. That's so good. Bad stitching is kind of formed around its chest region, and you kind of see maggots crawling from. Uh, uh. Tell me, did we by chance? Yes. Get our spell slots back in between sessions. Yes. Hey! Yes. That's why you woke up in the cavern. Hey! I, I wasn't sure if it was long enough to be a rest or not. Great! Uh, in that case, I will turn back to the creature, and I will, much more confidently than I was just mere seconds ago, uh, bonus action, uh, spiritual weapon, and attack it. Beautiful. Hit it with that spiritual... 14. That hits. Spiritual weapon damage? Hello? 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 Oh, it's doing the thing again where it asks me what level to cast, of course. Uh, 10 points of force damage. Beautiful. And for your action? Uh, for my action, I would... Uh, can I cast a spell and a cantrip on the same turn? You can cast a spell and a cantrip on the same turn if one is bonus action, yes. Perfect. Uh, then I will cast Word of Radiance. The DC 14 con save. What is the constitution of a dead thing? Hopefully, so, no. Hey! It takes okay. seven radiant damage? How does that work? Oh, 2d6. What? Uh, cantrip. So once it, it's gone up to 2d6, once when you've level leveled to a certain level. Yeah. Cantrips. Think you're more powerful. Got it. Thank you. Excellent. And that brings it next into the turn order of this beastly creature. And it attacks you with two slam attacks as it kind of just thrusts its two arms into you. Dan. So 13 hit. Uh, 13 does uh, not hit. There's a 24. Uh, let me think. 
Uh, yes, I'm pretty As sure that hits. Smacks across the side of your face where your eye is. Ow. Your ah. injured eye. It smacks, then it hurts. Oh, your blind spot. <laughs> right in your blind spot. And yeah, yeah, and you know what? You. Salty as I was, but that was what my bonus weapon appeared at as well. It was just like some kind of eye gouger thing. <laughs> Gross. It's just oh, a, a spoon. big spoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a fork. <laughs> it's dinner time. All right. And the Minotaur's turn then swipes its great axe at you, Thistle, but oh, yeah. misses. And that is fine. I am not bothered by that at all. Um, Tia. Okay. The um, is the skeleton guy still hanging on to the, to the boat, or is um, that gone? It has kind of moved off to the side. I would say you could melee attack the uh, flesh golem because okay. it is not being blocked off the ship, whereas the other one is by Thistle in the other area. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take out my two daggers. And then I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get the golem. Excellent. Attack him. Melee attack. And All right, here we go. Uh, let's see. Ah, oh, man. That would be a 19 to hit. 19 will hit. Okay, and damage. Dagger, 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 dagger. And you will get some, you do sneak attack because you're a rogue. Right, okay. Um, because you, because Dan is now in melee range as well. Awesome, okay, so that is, so I go ahead and do the dagger and also the sneak attack damage too? You can do that all in once for that first attack. All yes. at once, good. Okay, here we go. Uh, 3d6 for the sneak attack. Gotta love sneak attack. Let's see. Okay, five, five, one, eleven damage. For the that's sneak attack? The, that's for the sneak attack. And then adding for the dagger. Do, 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 do. Two, so that is five, five, one, eleven. And two is thirteen total. All right, is that two including your dex modifier for that? Oh, no, that would be five with a dex modifier. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. Top of the turn order, Valeria. Okay, um, I'm going to whack at him again twice with my action. A 25 and a uh, modified 20. Those are both hit. All right. I think I did one less damage than last time. 16 damage. Okay. And as my bonus action, if he's still standing, I would like to use Fury of Blows. You can use Fury of Blows. You drop your weapon into the onto the boat, and you can swing directly at this creature. Oh, I'm going to do it. Let's see. An arm strike. That is 16. And a 19. Those will both hit. Excellent. Um, and with my way of the open hand technique, I would like to try to knock him prone. All right. Love, takes, love monks. I know, I, I'm adoring her. Um, he takes 16 damage from my punches, and he needs to make... I believe it's a dexterity saving throw. Let me double check. Well, fortunately for you, he will need to make no saving throw. Can you describe for the audience how these fury of blows destroy the skeletal minotaur? Oh, just the fastest fish you've ever seen just coming out and pump, 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 pump. And he just falls and fell back. And I look really the, cool doing it. All of the bones kind of begin to crack as she punches into the rib cages and... Yeah. It just the spine kind of crumples as he disappears once again into the market. I blow on my knuckles. <sighs> Beautiful. Nice shot. Epic. This all. Yeah. Uh, after giving, after watching, uh, watching Alaria just punch this minotaur skeleton, you get a very like. Like a grin and approving nod from yeah. Thistle as they dart off and go to whack this uh, this flesh golem. Go in there, get a swipe. 
Alrighty. 23. It hits. Alrighty. Uh, I'm not using any Divine Smite for that one. Okay. 10. Okay. And uh, slap again. 15. It hits. Alrighty. And yeah, that one I will. Just level one. Beautiful. There we are, 20. 34 damage all up. Beautiful. Wow. Coming in with the big swings. Ooh. That brings it to you, Dan. This oh, hi. Beast is, all of its stitching is starting to get ripped and torn as maggots kind of move together, desperately trying to pull it back into one. Wonderful. Piece. And now I can see my friend is close by. I get sneak attack. So I will use my uh, my bonus action to hit it with my uh, finger majiggy. You can finger majiggy it. The 15 will hit. Uh, 14, actually. I've added the eye gunk thing now. Yes. 14 will hit. There's uh, 14 damage. Beautiful. And then I bop it with my mace. Bop it with the mace. Boom! Ooh. And you crit. All right, math that for me. Like 21. Cool. Is that right? That was quick maths. It might not be right maths. Sounds like the right maths to me. <laughs> uh, 21 plus 14. So. Yeah, that's right. 35. Okay. Beautiful. And the uh, creature will then attack. This time turning to Tia, and it's going to make two slams at you, Tia. Uncanny does... dodge. All right. A 12, does that one hit? Uh, let's see. My, my armor class is 13, just misses. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to, too, but they both crit failed. Um, all right, so this creature kind of bounces its body at you, but you kind of just move out of the that way to get it. away from it. And it is your turn to act. Okay. Uh, so while. This guy misses. I'm going to go ahead and attack again with my daggers. I already got my daggers out. Excellent. All right. So here we go. 17. Will 17 hit. hit. Okay. And let's see. Dagger. One die. 24. And you can roll the 3d6 as well. 6 Yep. There we go. Let me make sure I've got my, all my dice in the row here. Okay. Let's see. One plus two, one plus two plus four, three, four, seven. That's the three D six plus three, seven and three is 10 plus three, 13. 13 All right. Days. How do you do it? All righty. I'm going to see this guy and he's there. I'm going to take both of my daggers. I'm going to go ahead and just slam him into his chest and just rip his chest open. And when you do these, this postulous maggot filled ooze that dwells within him kind of explodes over all of you. Even you, Alaria, yeah. in the back, you feel a few splatters onto your back as maggots oh. crash into you and hit the bottom of the boat. Uh, I immediately uh, uh, gagging. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry for the mess. Sorry for the mess. Oh, I can, I can still feel them crawling. Uh, Vanny and on me. Did I get them off? Did I get them off? Uh, uh, just go ahead and try to get it all off of you here. Yeah. Tia yeah. Sorry and Alaria, can you both roll me D100s? Oh, no. Uh, all right, here we go. 40. 40. Uh-oh. 80 with a zero, and I don't remember. Is that a 90? 80. Just an 80. 80. Thank you. Okay, so, thank you. Alaria, you managed to get all of this germ off you immediately, and you just cleansed yourself, and it is gross, it is gross. But Tia, yeah. as all of this disgusting grime flies into your face and all over your body, ah. um, when this happens, you begin to just kind of feel like a little bit of a chuckle in your chest. Uh-oh. <coughs> Uh -oh. It feels weird. You feel a bit giggly. <laughs> so far, though, that's all you have to worry about. That's not good. Let's see. That's not good. 
Okay. And you guys can continue to make your way towards the witch. So after all of that, does anyone need eating? Um, I'm all right. <coughs> Got this cough. Ooh, are you okay, dear? All right. Got this bit of a cough here. Like a tickly feeling here. <coughs> and <coughs> as uh, as she says that, that cough begins to travel from a cough to a chuckle, <coughs> and then a laugh. <coughs> And then a cackle, like a, and she begins to cackle on this boat, kind of like a crazed witch. And her cheeks, her tiefling red cheeks, begin to turn almost purple with flush. Uh, I think I'm I'll in try. trouble. Oh, oh, and, uh, <laughs> um, um, uh, <laughs> maybe lesser restoration. L lesser restoration. Get restoration. <laughs> And as you cast Lester Restoration, the chuckling does begin to go down. But she was inflected with cackle fever. If it would have continued, she would have begun to take exhaustion points. Oh, that's and not eventually good. psychic damage. Thank you, my friend. Uh, you're welcome. I'm good at making people not die. Although I should warn you all, I have used all of my big spell slots. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank That's you. all right. I still have a bunch of mine. I mean, hopefully nobody else gets a pickle in the throat. Yeah. Well, it looks like there's a lot of different, uh, different ailments, I guess. But let's. That's bad. Let's try to. Uh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> well, this is kind of like a. Mm, <laughs> just like a, oh this no, is like actually this danger. is a lot <laughs> I'm in this danger lot. I'm in danger <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if Thistle is in danger I don't know if these count of, uh, these things count of normal diseases but we'll find out if Thistle fails a thing <laughs> good lord <laughs> because Paladin <laughs> it's a, well actually you're quite fortunate the cackle fever uh, gnomes are immune <laughs> Yay! Oh, yeah. It's the there one you know. disease that gnomes are just immune to. Maybe it's because they're so pleasant. But you are able yeah. to get this boat to this small island. And as you kind of push into the ground itself on the outskirts, the boat kind of just curves into this earth and kind of gets lodged into the muddy acre that is there. You can see that there is this house built upon what seems to be raw iron. The home is made out of dead driftwood from these darkened trees. It's got plates of moss covering the roof. There are bones hanging from the outside, feathers from the other. And you hear these strange creatures in the back kind of herding around. They look almost like peacocks, but they're covered in a slick oil as they kind of dart around in the back pen. There's a fire going in the room and it smells maybe like tea, maybe like soup, maybe like melted flesh inside. You can't quite discern where your nose is going as you approach It'll, this. Does it depend on how hungry you are? I think it 100% depends on how yeah. hungry you are. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, kind of like looking, looking over here and I want to see if there's any, you know, anything that could be a trap or a danger or anything like that, that we could trip or we could spring. Um, yes, roll me an investigation. Through. Investigation. Okay, here we go. Um, 12. With the 12, you don't seem to see anything, um, mostly because the ground is so soft and malleable. Every mm -hmm. step you take into the marsh before you get onto this kind of metal holding where the home is, you kind of just sink your ankles into the ground. Okay. Hmm. Don't see anything. So you far. keep an eye out, though. Right. Um. <clears throat> Does it seem like a pretty clear shot to the front door of this place, I guess. <laughs> a small awning where all these different chimes, almost of bones, feathers, rocks. Um, a few trinkets that seem to have been collected from the marsh around, kind of just jingle in this ghastly breeze. 
Can I step up onto the land? You can. You mean you don't want to stay in the muck? <laughs> uh, no, I, I am quite happy to be getting out of the uh, muck. Aleria, I wonder, uh, would you mind prestidigitating me? Because uh, I would not like to shake and get it all over you. All right. Absolutely. Um, and all right, then I don't just hurt yourself. Participate. Yes, yeah. both of them. And you go around and you're kind of clearing the muck off of your party members, clearing them from this grime. Um, but as you go around Dan, you begin to see his eye has begun to kind of just swell up completely. It almost looks like a like a softball on the side of his face. It's red and his you eyes know, completely You know, Dan, I think it's getting better. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, it, you <laughs> look fine. Just just fine. Oh, great. Yeah, good eye. You can yeah, take this off. New look for you. Yeah, with with it's your good eye, you it. can see Thistle behind these two, just kind of like, uh, mm, right? maybe <laughs> not. like not sure, nah. not sure about that one. We should probably get a move on. <laughs> Would anyone like to knock upon this door? It I'm seems to be made of the same. All right. <laughs> All right, and then, uh... Uh, who is it? Um, well, um, people in need of help. I didn't call for anyone to... I don't need any help. No, 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 we, we're the ones who need the help. Oh, you need the help. I suppose that would make a lot more sense. I haven't needed help in the past 30 years. Ha, <laughs> 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 Oh, you sound and you, <laughs> rather and jolly. And, and you hear the rustling. You hear like things being spilled out of bowls. This tables getting knocked into, and the door opens. And it's a very large woman with a with a great beak of a raven, um, slick back feathers uh, adorned with beads and other accoutrements. She's wearing a large robe that doesn't quite cover over her robust belly, but it's tied with a little sash. Her little claws kind of just go, yes, hello, who needs help? He does. Hello. Hello, I need help. Uh, my eye, it seems to have the eye rot. And I understand that perhaps you, are you the correct person to come to? We have headed west. Perhaps you are the person who has the eye bright. I, oh, I do have eyebright. I've been growing eyebrights in my little garden by the window. It's hard to get the good light for <laughs> the light in a cavern. <laughs> yes, quite. Uh, now, tell me, uh, just a little matter to settle between us. Would you say that you are whimsical? Are you full of whimsy? Whimsy? <laughs> I haven't heard that term since I was a young chick. <laughs> Yes, I would say I'm quite whimsical. Dan just looks back at the party like, told you so. And as you come in, her this entire area is just disgusting. There are like dried out legs hanging from one wall. But on the other wall is like glorious tapestries with floral designs in her kitchen. Her kitchen looks like the homie's kitchen with flowers growing, quite beautiful. But this main area that you are seeing has dried bones, the room is very dark. There's a great cauldron in the center with bubbling green fluid. Um, it is a very interesting dichotomy of this bird woman as she makes her way, come in, come in. <laughs> what can I get for you? You said eyebrights, eyebrights. Now that is a very rare plant, my boy. My girl, my child, my horse. Do I, I am need a, to cue uh, the horse? Do I need to cue the horse as well? Do I need to give him regular legs? Fish legs, perhaps? Can I just put you in my pot and see what happens? No, no, no. I am a fake creature. <laughs> my people originate from the Feywild. This is how I am <laughs> naturally being. A fake creature in the hells. <laughs> I know. Hello. Oh, the last time I had a fey creature and she gestures over into this large room and there's a jar with a skeletal fey creature. It's it's dead. It's a little dead pixie in a jar. I couldn't figure out what to feed her. Easy <laughs> woman. Off in the way. Oh no. <laughs> no, no, I believe okay. there's usually a, a trading of sorts in order to receive 
treatment. What can you trade me, fey creature? Perhaps something around the house is broken. I am a bit of an Andy fey. Andy, well, <laughs> I have lots of hands and she pulls out a drawer in this main room and it's kind of like one of those thin drawers that you normally would hang like pots and the thing mm -hmm. is she pulls it out it just has some, like 20 hands of all different races okay. I don't know what you expected there Dan <laughs> I don't either honestly I asked for this I will take a hand I could take one of your hands it is good uh -oh. to payment yes, I don't no, have any uh, fey hands. No, 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 no. Uh, you got two of them in a jar, technically. <laughs> I meant that I can be Andy and that I can fix things. Maybe one of your drawers is stuck. <laughs> stuck. That's funny. No. <laughs> I'm like looking back at the other three, like, how? <laughs> and I've taken a step back. I'm just like, <laughs> I think this will also take a step back, but less out of I don't want to be involved and more of a I'm just going to watch it and see how it's all out. <laughs> Are you looking for anything? Are you in need of uh, treasure or anything like that? Do you need hmm. pretty nice? Or, you know, what to do? Here. Hmm, what do I need? I haven't needed anything in quite a long time. Perhaps companionship. <laughs> Friendship. Will you be long a big you... bird's friend? How long have you been here? <laughs> oh. And she opens up a large, she like kind of scurries over to a large book that seems almost like a grimoire. But as she's flipping through pages, it just has lines and dashes and lines and dashes. And she just continues to flip through it until the last page. Hmm. About 40,623 days. <laughs> Crazy how time just flies. And she takes out one of her, like pulls out a feather from her chest, dips it into some like reddish muddy fluid and marks another day down and closes the book. 40,000 days, that's quite a long time. And you've been alone since then. No, once in a while I get some companionship, but they don't want to stay my friend for very long, so I keep their friendship in a jar. Bad like friends get punished. Like the pixie. No, 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 my oh. child. And she pulls out this jar and it's got a glowing essence in it. And it kind of moves around as it presses against the glass. You see the face of an elvish woman. And it swarms back into a floating orb. And she shakes it a little bit before putting it back into the cabinet. Okay. So just sit around and tell me a good story about your lives. Each of you, one good story for friendship's sake. And if I like it, I'll heal your friend. And if I don't, I'll keep you here until you have something <laughs> better to say. How to go, describe looks like we're having a crisis. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, well, first things first, generally friendship kind of starts with a really little introduction thing. What's your name? I don't think we ever got it. <laughs> I'm Maze. Like a puzzle. <laughs> they said I'm puzzling. <gasps> All right. Well, my name's Thistle. Nice to meet you. Thistle, Thistle. I have thistles in my garden. Do I plant you next? No, I'd, I'd rather not, actually. Um, kind of like seek the sunlight on my own kind of thing. Just kind of. Sunlight? What is sunlight? <laughs> Uh, it's a, a story for another day, I think. Um, yeah, uh, this is Tia. This is Alaria. Um, what kind of stories you like? Hmm, good ones. Good ones, Thistle. Tell me a good story. Yeah, well, the thing is, a good a good story kind of accounts to like takes your taste into account. So like, taste, taste. Oh, taste. I haven't eaten a gnome in years. Don't ask me about taste, child. <laughs> oh, shit. 
I'm gonna step a little closer to Thistle. Just a little <laughs> shoulder around her, her an arm around her. I just need one good story. Entertain me. Can I well. perform an insight check on this person? Like, how powerful are they? Yeah. You can roll an insight, but you'll have to subtract it with one. As you're having <laughs> trouble seeing this dancy bird. The 20. Um, this creature Ooh. is very powerful. You can tell by the way she darts around confidently that she has apt. She, like, all of her guard is completely down around all of you. You know, with the big weapons, the kind of powerful movement, and the holy garb, she seems so unconcerned, like you are flies in her house. One story, all it takes, and you can have all of the eye bright to cure that festering little wound. <laughs> festering. And I knew someone. Well, um... I, I used to work in a carnival and, and there's tons of carnival stories. Do you, a carnival? You like carnival? <laughs> Tell me, what went wrong in the carnival? What terrible Everything. thing happened in... <laughs> I like you, dearie. I like you. Your ears are nice. I have ones just like it. Tell me the story. Yes, I quite like my ears and I just kind of cover my hair over them. <laughs> well, um, let's see. One time at the carnival I was working at, we were attacked by a group of harpies and we oh. had to send them off one by one. Beautiful, beautiful. What did the harpies do? Well, one of them actually ripped a gnome that looked similar to her. Um, <laughs> straight in half, it was, it was horrifying, it was horrifying. Oh, and I barely got away. It actually took my leg and I had to get it reformed. <gasps> It's us, the feathered folk. We just love legs. Such <laughs> that is a good creature. <laughs> it, is, it is so good. And she claps her little claws together. Okay, okay. I will go get some eyebright real quick. That is a funny story. <laughs> and this creature disappears into their kitchen, leaving you all alone. It ripped your leg off? The harpy? No, of course not. Of course not. Okay. Just checking. Just checking. Uh, it, turns seems... out... <laughs> it turns out that they are indeed whimsical. <laughs> you so okay, whim... Dad? Yeah, just I lost my accent. They're so whimsical. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You talked the French out of them. <laughs> <laughs> I crazy burned the French out of Scott. Very good. <laughs> Is there anything you would like to do while she's away hunting for her plants? I'd like to just walk around, see if there's anything interesting, see if there's anything that seems a bit, I mean, I guess everything looks out of place, but anything, yeah, well, that, any, anything, that, would, anything that would be of value, I suppose? Yeah, roll me an investigation. Yeah, Okay. Can I do look uh, for some liquid bottles or um like potions? Of course. Yes, roll me an investigation. Can I look can I look for the pendant? You can roll me an investigation. Thirteen. All right, a thirteen for Tia. Uh eleven. Three. Eleven for Thistle. Twelve. Number twelve. All right. So with your thirteen at Tia, you kind of look around and you're looking through. And you see on this small altar table, this athame, this sacred blade that she must use in forms of rituals. It's encrusted in jewels and it looks very, very nice. Um, Illyria, with your 12, you kind of peer around and you do find an entire like curio cabinet full of mysterious vials. Some have eyeballs with the eyelids still attached, kind of blinking at you. Some glow mysterious colors, but there seems to be an entire cabinet full of fluids in there. In Thistle, you find an entire box of small items that seem like beads and bone chunks, but you don't really have, you don't think you really have the ability to sift through to see if you can find what you are looking yeah, for. Yeah, Thistle's not going to be pushing their luck. <laughs> no way. I'm going to take a look at the knife. I'm, uh, how big is this knife? This big it knife is part. about this large and it is covered, the entire handle is encrusted with jewels. And in the center facet is a, uh, it looks almost like onyx carved into the shape of a feather, kind of 
set yeah. inside and the blade is finely crafted and very, very sharp. Wow. Nice. Very, very nice. What do you guys think? Oh, I... Listen, I'm inclined to agree, but um, do we really think this is a good idea? Talking of nice... <laughs> Rachel just raided us oh, with 69 nice. people, and I wouldn't nice, normally nice, call nice, out the nice, number, nice, but nice. Nice, 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 nice. Thank you so much for the raid. Welcome in, everyone. Thank you, thank you, raiders. My favorite, nice. my new favorite NPC I've ever role played. <laughs> hmm. Oh yeah, uh, hi raiders. We're stuck in like a witch hag's house. Sh yeah. They're crazy. They're gonna kill us. Uh, we're doomed. Yeah, we're all this gonna like, die. Her name's Maze. She's a puzzle. White. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna die. Is there anything anyone? Any last moment things? Why couldn't she be Maze? A strand of corn, please. <laughs> <laughs> please. I resist the temptation to uh, nab a bottle and walk back to where everybody else is standing. <laughs> Can I do a sleight of hand? <laughs> We're gonna die! <laughs> do yeah, so if you would like, you could do a sleight of hand. Okay. And uh -huh. I'm, proficient at, I'm proficient at sleight of hand, so. Three, already that accent is giving me chills. <laughs> what accent? A 16. All right, and do you just stuff it away, or do you place anything in its place? What do you do? Um, I just go ahead and just slip it like in the pouch or something okay and you just kind of tuck it away and no one in the party really notices as you kind of just stuff it in there and uh, you can all kind of coalesce right back where you were and you've heard the entire time things breaking what seems like a deranged cat screeching in the back <laughs> do you hear do you hear it um and the and the and just things are breaking and she's just like, where is it? I've lost it again. My mind, that is. <laughs> oh, I'm so great. Oh, there, 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 there. And she comes out and she's carrying a single flower that looks similar to a lotus. But it has a very long stem with two leaves. And she holds it. And the, though the flower is large, it stands well on this thin curved stem. She walks over to the pot and drops it in. It will just take a second, Derry. A little ritual is all it takes. <laughs> oh, I am very good at rituals. Maybe I can help you. Oh, yes. <laughs> will you grab me the, actually the skeleton of the pixie for me? Just drop it into the pot. <laughs> oh, <Okay. Your> brethren. <laughs> mm. Oh, I kind of come along and... <laughs> Take the pixie, regretting everything. <laughs> is 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 this necessary for the ritual? <laughs> it's either that or I take one of your finger bones. <laughs> I <laughs> no. like the pinky. Oh yes, well, uh, just pour that in there. Then. <laughs> and when you do it, it's... Oh, uh, hmm. and she goes and she grabs a few of these vials, Alaria kind of grabbing them, knowing exactly where the things are. And she's just like packing off, like beak in, pulling off the cork. And then she opens her mouth to split the cork. <laughs> I'm such a riot. I like to have fun when I do my rituals. And she's just pouring various fluids in. Oh, I right. I leave her for and I'm just like, I don't think that's very sanitary. <laughs> just a few more. Have you seen this place? <laughs> a few more spell components, maybe some ritual items. <laughs> Let me go to my altar. <laughs> An altar. I love altars. <laughs> and she walks over to her altar and she grabs a skull off the top of it. And oh. she places her hand and Tia, she isn't looking, but she places her hand where her dagger was. Uh. Huh. Seems I've lost something. <laughs> Bird brain, I say. And she chucks the skull, not looking. And it spins around the rim before dropping in. And you hear a scream come from the potion. Yeah. <laughs> <And> well, like, <laughs> you know the helpful cook that doesn't really know what to do? Dan's just standing by the pot and stirring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I suppose.
suppose I'll have to find that, won't I? Because if I don't, I have to burn the whole place down with you inside. <gasps> that would be a Perhaps real shame. Should... Maybe, we... Maybe... Maybe we can help you look. Well, someone go ask my nasty birds outside. They tend to steal things from me. <laughs> I'll go. Excellent. I'll go. I'll go. Uh, just outside. Just around the back. Just around the back. Okay. All righty. So I'm going to go ahead and go, but I'm going to take out one of my daggers just in case. Okay. Around the back. And you go around the back, and when you do... There are these slit creatures. They look like they could be beautiful, but they are just completely caked in this oily substance. And they all stop and turn to look at you as you approach. No, I know this track, no. <laughs> Who are you? What are you doing here? Why are you here? I'm with them, inside. Who's inside? Why are you inside? Why did you come here? He sent me out here. Who? You're talking birds. And they lift up their little bird feet that's kind of stuck in this mush. And when they do, you see human feet. And they put them back into the mush. Birds? You think we are birds? No, okay. she fooled you. Why are you out here? Okay. Why aren't you getting what? Wait, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. You thought human feet. Are you guys. Did she change you or something? Yes, of course she did. She's crazy. Have you seen her? I know she's crazy. She's absolutely crazy. We pissed her off. We're adventurers. We did what we had to do. How did you piss her off? Of course, we took things. Things we liked. Fancy things. Oh. She turned us into bird people. What did you take? Just various things. I don't know. Uh, he took a pebble or something got stuck into his shoe. So she got mad because he stole something from her. How long have you guys been out here? I don't know. How long has she been in there? The newest one is from three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Okay. And one guy looks over and he's kind of just kind of sitting and, he, and he's sinking into this rot. Hey, yeah. I, uh, she had a cool staff in there. I thought it would be useful. Hey. And you guys can't leave. She keeps you here. Uh, yeah, the last one that tried to leave, yeah, I don't know if you've seen it. If you look up at this ceiling, it's a huge splatter mark. Yeah, it's kind of gross. That was my party member who tried to leave. We were traveling as a pair. It was kind of bad. Uh, okay. How many birds are there out there? About 12. Okay, this is really, really bad. And inside, you just hear, <laughs> I'm starting to get angry, aren't I? <laughs> Funny how that works. Okay. Can I pretend, can I just like start looking around the and room yeah. like trying to help look for it? Yeah. And yeah, you all can start sifting around trying to help her. And as she's moving around, she's beginning to throw vials out of it. Things are breaking around and she's kind of just destroying her home. And okay, you can hear guys. the crashing. Sit tight. I'll be back. I'll be back. Oh, no, you won't. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go ahead and turn around. I'm going to walk in. I'm going to pull out the ritual dagger. Mm -hmm. Come back in. Looking for this? And she's And she's got, like, two arms in her hand, and she kind of turns to look at you with her claws digging into this flesh, and both of the hands flop at you as you go. <laughs> oh! Oh, 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 those measly cretins had it, didn't they? <laughs> Adventurers, you can't trust any of them. And she flings the arms back and they smack against the wall. If you peer up, you do see a splatter mark in the shape of a humanoid. Okay. Well, go ahead and offer it to her. And this thing kind of slinks towards you and she snatches it. And as she looks at it in her hands, I'm going to skin all of them. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, child. I like you. An honest sort. <laughs> I'm going to skin all 12 of those creatures. And she kind of slinks back. And she, she begins to move her hands around. It's so much fun doing magic. 
guys, we have to get out of here now. And when she does this, she slits her throat and the blood kind of flows in. And as she does it, uh, this dark necromatic magic kind of begins to form around her and heal her body as she does it. <laughs> it's funny how magic work, doesn't it? And she reaches in and she kind of goes, come here, boy, come here, child, come here, sweetheart. <laughs> I I look nervously at Fissel and my friends. And at this point, half of your face is covered in swelling. It's almost hard to turn your face to them. Well, I mean, with with that in mind, I'm gonna obviously step closer because she has the cure, right? Oh yes, this is this. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm looking... Get closer, 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 <laughs> closer. I, yeah, <laughs> my my grip is tightening on that axe, and the moment anything looks like it's becoming like not a cure, <laughs> like I'm gonna and, try. And it. she has you lean your face until you were just like beak to nose to this creature, and she kind of scoops up a pile of the sludge and just kind of smacks it onto your face. And you can feel the like talons on you as she kind of just rubs it around into your eye. Uh. She, she reeks of blood and you can tell she does like, and you, as you are looking at her, you see the dried blood on her chest from various rituals. It seems almost a little unnecessary, but you don't know how this, I mean, you know how this one works. But as, as this kind of gross warm fluid sits on you, it begins to feel very cooling. And you can feel the swelling begin to like, lower on your face. You all see this mud caked on a huge swollen part of Dan's skull, but it begins to shrink down. And as it does, this mud hardens and begins to flake off. And as it all flakes off, Dan's face is returned to normal. Oh, all right. That's wonderful. Okay. Well, with that business done, I think we should probably be on our way, right? Already? Yeah. Oh, look at the <laughs> Gonna miss the show! Don't you want to see me skin the birds? Oh. Well, that sounds wonderful, right, friends? But it does? <laughs> but for such a gift, we have we don't really have much more to give you in return, and like you said, a trade. So we wouldn't like to overstep the boundary of our wonderful agreements. Yeah, we're kind of like we don't want to overstay our welcome. Okay, yeah. well, you'll come back to visit, though, right? We're here for the long haul. Hell. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, they do say, like, the best friendships kind of traverse, uh, like, distance and all that, all that, so we'll be able to meet up again and talk again like nothing's happened. And right. distance does make the cart go front fonder. Oh, suppose mm -hmm. I should take up my friends on the offer for that piece of the plane of existence, then. <laughs> so I can visit you. Anywhere! Oh! Oh! oh. 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 My uh, well, friend that, has the sorry. piece! Oh, well, I think that friends, uh... Like, fr like, we're friends now, so we should probably get to know each other's friends, you know? Because, like, you know that thing where, like, it's really bad when, like, you you make friends with one person, and then you meet their friend group and realize that you don't really get along, so that means you're in an awkward position in the middle of us both, so... I haven't had very many friends, clearly. Oh, the gnome is popular. It's because you're so cute. Oh, should I call my friend? Should I summon my friend? I just, there's, there's that look of, I don't want to do this, but it has the thing that we want. No. Can, well, wait, wait, before we, before you summon your friend, how about we, um, because we don't, what kind of person are we going to be meet, meeting? Uh, I think it's always good to prepare first. Oh, well, it's actually, and it's funny enough that they would become my friend, but it's one of the city guards. He sits in a little tower right outside of the city, the little weirdo with the big chain weapons. Yes. <laughs> He's got a piece. He's got a piece and he would do anything for me. It's because I keep chains and I like his, and I don't think he wants me to take his chains. <laughs> well, nobody yes. likes the chain jinx, correct? Oh, that's yeah. true, clever one. I like you, the one with the ears, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah, well, 
how about like we're we're kind of travelers and i think it would be great to have like a link back to this place so maybe if we were to get that plane pendant then we'd be able to visit you whenever we like that and, would be a wonderful uh, if, he's, idea. if he'll do anything for you then maybe like he could give a gift to us so that way we can come visit you as much as you like if you're gonna make me roll any kind of explosion check i would like to use my divine my <laughs> divine uh, uh my channel divinity yeah you can Okay, um, You can use your kill so, you can use your advantage, you can use whatever you want. Yeah, I, I'll use my advantage as well, but I'm going to use my channel divinity. Um, you can use your channel divinity or, to augment your presence with divine power. As a bonus action, you grant yourself a plus five bonus to persuasion checks for the next ten minutes. There you go. There so, you go. I've got a roll persuasion, this has advantage, and it also has a plus five. Okay. Oh, 24. Oh, 24. <laughs> <clears throat> And she kind of taps at her beak with her claws. That is true, and I don't really like to leave my house. It's where all of my stuff is. <gasps> yes, okay. Yes, let me find something. Maybe something to prove that you are my friends and you'll visit me. <laughs> I'll probably have less birds though. I hope you don't mind. Yes? Oh no. Yeah. Okay. I let me go find something, okay? Let me go find something. And she kind of pushes this cauldron out of the way and lifts up a hatch. And when she does, she cl like climbs down a stairway and closes the hatch behind her. One moment, don't go anywhere. Oh God, I'm seeing guys, the guys, evil old guys. woman. You know the gift? Big old, big old, big <laughs> <laughs> those birds, those birds in the back are not birds. They're people, they're adventurers. She transformed them. There's 12 of them in the back. They're people. I, I, they're prisoners. But they're birds. Oh, I, can we get them out? Can we get the. Oh, what? Oh, shit. I, they, they're talking birds. They're talking birds. They're talking birds. I talked with them in the back when I was pretending to look for the dagger. Pretending to? What do you mean? Never mind. There are 12 of them in the back. Those are the birds that she was talking about. The one that she was think, talking about skinning and everything, but they're not birds, they're people, they're adventurers. Okay, 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 okay. Stumbled okay. over here, stumbled, stumbled here, stumbled here. She has them prisoner, transformed them into birds. They're stuck here. Okay, okay. First point of order, get the amulet thing. We do not want that in her hands, definitely not. Okay. Step two, she seems to like me. Mm -hmm. I'll create a distraction, and you all can go and do something with the thing. Uh, step three, improvise. Step four, run. Step five, profit. I like profit. <laughs> I could tell her another story. As you say profit, she opens it and goes, okay, so this is how it's going to work, children. Oh, I'm going to give you a tool to give to the man on the island because he won't come here if you're all here probably he might kill you you all seem living and i don't think he likes that <laughs> but i'll give you something and he'll know it's from me we have a special thing okay this is from his brother okay and she lifts up a still beating heart oh it's oh, his brother's right. he'll know it's from me Okay. Give him the heart. Say I said to trade it for the amulet piece. His brother's been looking for it for years. <laughs> Yay. All right. Well, uh, can we get maybe like a written note as well, just in case it's like a and she turns it and there's writing on the heart. All right. Never mind. Thank you. you. Look at you. <laughs> just Look be careful. You, with it. And, and then she places it out for someone to grab. I, I, uh, I, I, I'll take it. Okay. Oh, no, you got it. I, I can you, take you've it. Dad, you have dealt with enough. <laughs> you have dealt with like throwing your brethren, like your dead brethren, to a pot and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, I'll take the heart. This so um, you take this still beating heart, and it and it's not very. It, it's humanoid in style, but there seems to be some sort of like fiendish power radiating from it. it seems to be the heart of a demon. All right, uh, I'm gonna put it in like a wrap it up in something and put it. In a like in my bag. Just right on the top. It just sits gently on the top. Uh, yeah, it's just strapped to the, the top of my bag. Just. Do, do, do. Oh. And it does. You feel the thumping behind you. Yeah. <laughs> well, 
Does that mean you guys are off? I have to go get my axe. <gasps> you have a nice axe, little gnome. Where did you get that toy? Oh, well, funny story, actually. Actually, that makes, like, that's quite an interesting story. Uh, if you like, I can sit and tell it to you. And I'm just, like, looking at the rest oh, of the group. <laughs> love it. Yes. Okay, sit down in that chair. Or... Uh, I, I uh... will begin making preparations outside. Yeah. Excellent, smart one. Yeah. I like the fake creatures. Yeah. They're yeah. always smart. <laughs> I'd like to listen to the story with Thistle, um, if you guys don't mind. Come sit. You're a storyteller, so I... <laughs> the harpies. I won't skit over that story. It's so okay. good. I'll go with Dan. I'll go good with idea. Dan. <laughs> oh, yes, let's go. <laughs> You're getting the laugh down. Very good. <laughs> so tell me of this axe. What does it do? Okay. All right. So this, and uh, they'll get this axe and just kind of put it. So this is a uh, holy weapon of the dear sweet Torm, who is our, who is our, uh, I can't remember the name, uh, the Loyal Fury. I thought it was Righteous for some reason. <laughs> it's like the Loyal Fury. And uh, this used to be my weapon back when I was, uh, I used to be a town guard, essentially. <gasps> and, oh, God. Uh, yeah, so it was a pretty, it wasn't a huge town back on the material plane, but it was pretty, it was, it was decent. And uh, I started off as a town guard, but essentially my actions there kind of got me noticed by the Paladin Order of Torm. And I got recruited by them. And essentially it was our job to kind of, fight on the front lines, I guess. Oh, uh, tell me more and... of every single body that was cleaved with that weapon. <laughs> you must have some gory stories. And as she says that, and demands that you tell her of every gruesome detail of everyone you've ever killed with Light Sphere. You two make your way out of this area and her laugh still echoes through. Okay. So, uh, what is the plan? I feel sorry for these people. Uh, surely we help them take their burden or take their place, correct? Yeah, pretty much. She said, they, they said that they took stuff from her. Okay. And that was how, that was why they were there. She basically imprisoned them because they took one of them took a pebble. One of them took one of her staffs. And she went ahead and she made them into birds. Okay, well, let's go and talk to them. See if they maybe still have the things. Then maybe they can return them. And, uh, yeah, perhaps... we can talk to them. We can, we yeah. can see. We... Yeah, okay. Mediate, so mediate, gonna... yes. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and... Make your way around. Make and your way around. And as you do, the, the nervous bird who's kind of looking around, let me show you his feet. Why are you still here? You have a chance to get away? Did you get away? Why'd you get away? Okay, so listen, I can what see you have been- Did she already get you? Uh, no, uh, this is my natural form. Am I not glamorous? And I do a little And then like, another side. man in the back goes, nah, man, he's a fey creature. Hey, that's cool. Hello. Hey, uh, that's cool. Any anyway, uh, listen, uh, so you all took something, right? Uh, no. Do you still have them? Oh, no, 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 no. She, she got those back. She got those back when she turned us into birds when we didn't have hands. And they kind of flap their wings. Only thing that's left normal and they lift their feet up and they're kind of really wrinkled as they've kind of been standing in this marsh. A form of trench foot is forming and they kind of lift up their feet and put it back down. Uh, dear, my ideas really hinged on them still having the items. <laughs> <sighs> uh, and there are, there are 12 of you, right? How are we going to get 12 birds out of here? Uh... Hey, man, don't worry about it. I've been here for nine years. I'm just chilling back here, man. Nothing bad ever happened to us as birds. She feeds us. My feet are kind of rotted, but it's okay. She's uh... going to skin you. Why, man? I've never done anything wrong. <laughs> Mine is stealing the one time. She's going. She said that she's going to come out here and she's going to skin you guys. Because oh, you all shit. took her ceremonial dagger, you should not have done that. 
wait. What? what, man? I've never stolen. I mean, listen, I just got a pebble stuck in my foot once. We were all in there smoking some hash. It was fine. But then a pebble got stuck to my shoe. And it's like, you know, shit happens. But like, I've never stolen anything from her. I can't, I can't get in there. None of us can. If something was stolen, it was stolen by somebody else. Well, then that's what you should tell her. And then when she comes out to skin you, you should tell her that they were stolen by someone else. Nah, man, she don't listen. She don't listen to likes us. We're birds. Mushroom gives an advantage specifically for the bird person. <laughs> the advantage goes to the bird man. Hi, so me. And the one guy is like freaking out, like, everyone get ready! It's, this is the end! This is the end of all of us! This is the end of all of us! The one guy in the back who's kind of just rotting into the ground. Oh uh, man. You know I got four kids, man. This isn't... This isn't what I signed up for. <laughs> I am so are, out of ideas. Are they... Are, are they in a pen? Is there a fence they're, around? They're in, they're in a pen, yes. Is there any way to get them out of the pen? There is a gate. There's a gate. Gate's got a lock. No. So we can just. It, yep. So we can Honestly, just, we can just push the it, door open. it looks like you just have to use fingers to be able to open it, and that's the reason why they can't open it. We can always open the door. What you think? Open the door, and then maybe get like a two hundred foot lead. How fast can you guys fly? <laughs> We're covered in oil, man. We can't fly. She slicked us down. We should have bought out That's Alaria. She had no prestigious digitization. I can always go back in and get her out. And she can do it. Sure. Uh, in the meantime, I will try and clean you up uh, by hand. All right, and Tia, you can sneak in there. When you crack open the door, it seems that Thistle and this witch are completely engaged in conversation. If you want to roll a stealth to attempt to get Illyria, you can. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and roll a stealth check. Okay, and I will check her passive perception. Okay. Can I, do I have... help by, like, ramping no. up the story, Yeah, you hear, you hear the door creak because you're hyper aware. You hear the door creak, mm -hmm. so you can go in there and give her advantage if you'd like. Tia, you can take advantage on your roll. Okay. First roll was better. 17. 17. And as you kind of slink in there, and as you touch Larry's arm and kind of pull her out, you both begin to sneak out of the door. But as it creaks, you hear her. <laughs> oh, that is a good story, Thistle. Tell me once again, how did you rip off their head with that? Oh, and it glows. The cock glowing axe, yes. And you're able to make it outside. Okay. Yeah, this one has been telling some pretty gruesome stories all the and time. She, and yeah. she's loving it. She's even giving you, like, biscuits, like, to eat with while you eat. <laughs> and they taste just kind of like dirt, but they're not they're not bad in any way, but they seem to be just made of, like, mulching dirt. Yeah. They're, like, d politely and just nibbling yeah. on one. Very yeah. slowly. <laughs> Yeah, they keep telling the stories. You guys do your thing. Godspeed. What? What? What do you need? What? Okay. We have a problem back there. I'm gonna go ahead and, and bring her over to Dan. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah. Okay, so I, we come back. We come back. And Dan, you are like wiping this oil, and it is just smearing around, and you're doing your very <laughs> best. It's like a Dawn commercial out here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you take this moment to clean the birds and you guys can discuss and I'm going to run to make a quick bye. Okay. Uh, I go ahead and explain to her what's going on and that mm -hmm. they're in the pen. They can't get out because they don't have fingers. But the problem is, is that if we go ahead and we open the door, because that's just a simple thing, even if they go out, we'll have maybe like what a four hundred feet head start. We before... about thistle. Yeah. yeah. 
And, well, I mean, Fissile is quite nimble, right? They only have uh, the little legs, but they are uh, quick. If they can Maybe. fly, then, I mean, at least they could have a hope of getting away. What if we, um, ooh, what if we opened the gate enough to where they could push it open themselves and get out? That way we can make a clean break and, oh, I gotta go. And then, you know, they can get out on their own before they get murdered. I mean, honestly, they shouldn't have stolen the Asame if they didn't want to get murdered. I don't, I don't see that. No, that's what I said, personally. Uh, uh, look, okay. Yes, I like it. We open the gate, but just a little bit. We clean these okay. guys off. Maybe we just clean half of them off. And the rest, they can clean each other off. We'll the give wings. them just the wings. Uh, yeah, maybe we just clean the wings enough to fly. Oh, okay. Listen, bird people. How do you feel about pretending to overthrow us? <laughs> what? We stage that they are, like, battling us, and we like, oh, no. We make a loud racket so that she comes out, giving Fissel a chance to run away, and then she's like, oh, you naughty bird people, how dare you? Uh, they have a chance to run away. We have a chance to run away. And this, I think we are truly into step four, improvise at this point. I feel like... This is a good break. I don't have an argument for it, but I just... Mm. Best yes, of, and let's go. Best of poor options. <clears throat> Best of poor options. So, so, yes, we pretend to let them beat us to death, and then... She chases them? I mean, uh -huh. get up man. and limp away? Or, or... That's a, nah, man, like, though, that's like a good idea, though, man. Because, like, hear me out. Like, what can, ha what can happen is I can be like, you can lay down into the marsh, right, man? Wait. <laughs> Very important. I'm going to insight check these bird people. Are they telling the truth or are they just trying to get us to free them? Roll <laughs> <laughs> an insight check. I'm using an advantage here. Okay. The birds work for the bourgeoisie. <laughs> <laughs> With a 12, is you kind of have this realization, like, maybe they're not lying. Like, that verb man is kind of like, yeah, man. You begin to feel it. As a fae, you kind of feel like some sort of charm effect, strange effect going on with these birds it's like yeah man no it'd be great you'll just lay in the marsh and we'll fly off and then when she comes to chase after us man you can just get back on the boat and get out of here yeah <laughs> that's a good idea why are you why why, why are you trying to charm us yeah, what you're charming us you're using charming magic i'm a fake creature i recognize this uh, man man you're you're overthinking it you're overthinking it man it's fine Fresh out of Tia, Illyria, there's more than there seems to be here. I'm not quite sure what, but they, they are not quite what they seem. Maybe we just let them kill her, or kill, let her kill them. I mean... Whoa, they... whoa, 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 whoa. Calm, <laughs> calm down, calm down. We, ain't, we have not done anything wrong. I mean, you stole her Athame. That's why she wants to kill you. So, I mean, you would know that living here. And one of the birds who haven't spoken and just keep who's just kind of been weeping in the back goes, I don't understand. It's all just too much. And another bird's like, this is crazy, man. Oh, gosh. They got us, though, right? Guys, come on. No more jokes. No more jokes. Come together. Come together. And all of these birds who have these different, very different personalities kind of begin to walk into each other. And as they do, this oil kind of slicks into one. And it's just a single Aarakocra. Hello. It's a pleasure to meet you. A what? A what? You seem alarmed. Should I explain? <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, well. She struggles in there, my wife. She's your wife? Yes. Okay. 
Go but on. She, okay, so she doesn't quite understand what is going on. And she thinks I'm 12 birds trapped in here. You're not 12 birds trapped in here. No, she's killed every adventurer that is stolen from her immediately. But she's easy to confuse and beguile. So now she believes that there are 12 birds out here of captured adventurers, and I need to get away from my wife at all costs. The first bird came when she first arrived. So I became the first bird. It was a great way to slide out. I've had a break back here for the past, like, 2,000 years. It's been quiet. But you want to get away from her. Well, realistically, I just didn't want her to know I was back. But if you would like, I can go in there and free your friend. You were willing to save me as a bird person. Yeah, ideally. Let's, yes, that would be great. Get this away. Uh, uh, insight again. Are they being truthful? I, I, hang on. I have a thing. I have a thing. I have an ear for deceit, <laughs> uh, for picking out lies. Um, so essentially, I can't. Uh, if I roll less than seven, then it becomes an automatic D8 plus modifier. So my minimum roll is like a, I don't know, a 14. Okay, roll. Could I roll, could I roll an inside check on her? If you would like, you can. All right, I'll go ahead and roll an inside check. 18. All right, well, we'll take tops at 18. This person seems completely honest. You can see that this arrow croaker is a lighter bird, almost more owl-esque, and you can see tiredness in their eyes, exhaustion. Very calm, very gentle demeanor. Why, why do you sneak away? Why don't you just leave? Because this <laughs> is, you do realize we are in hell, right? There's only so far you can go, and it's better than her searching everywhere for me. She just thinks I died. Or she forgot. Who knows? You know she's crazy. You've seen her, right? No, uh, not crazy, no. What would be her reaction to seeing you again, though? That's a good question. You probably should wait outside while we find out. Uh, I get the impression that perhaps you have fallen out of matrimonial love. Oh. Yeah, but Eric Croker mate for life. So, Hopefully and now we're in hell, so now it's like eternal life. It's fine, oh. it's fine. I've had a good break. I'm sure we can get on, crack on. Maybe I can clean out some of those skulls in my bedroom. Yeah, it's pretty bad in there. Yeah, I'm sure. At least my kitchen is my kitchen still clean. I've kept oh, it. The, it the, nice. the kitchen's oh. fine. The kitchen's oh, fine. Good. Thank the you. I'm glad she kept the kitchen the same. But... All right, we need to get this one out of there. Um, have, and they... I have a fear. Eric? That's all I was going to say. Okay, the air croaker will lead. <clears throat> and they'll open the door. And as they do, and it's loud, this will, you can turn back and you see an owl-like air croaker with light feathering who looks old and tired. Very wise. And the... And as he does from behind uh, Dan, uh, you can hear him say... Oh, following the sins of my wife to hell and to marriage. And he opens the door. And as he does, you can actually see in his garb a holy symbol kind of imprinted on the back of his vestments. And he opens which, the door and he goes, which symbol, Hello, which symbol? dear. It looks familiar, Dan. It looks very familiar. What, like, Almost blo like bloodied hands? It matches. <gasps> perhaps bloodied hands. And he walks in with a sigh. Hello, my dear, I have returned. Have you missed me? And her eyes peel from you, Thistle. And all of her bones crack as her head turns to the side. Well, isn't this a joyous occasion? <laughs> Honey, would you like to have gnome for dinner? I haven't seen you in so long. <gasps> How what? very good. And she gets up and she runs past you. And he's like, come dear, let's go to the kitchen. We can we can prepare, we can come, we can prepare the, the stove for the gnome, yes. And she's like, oh, it is so great. They tell great stories. You'd love their acts. It's holy. <laughs> Remember when you were a holy before I killed your entire clergy? <laughs> the door is open, Thistle, and they have both gone to the kitchen. 
help me out. <laughs> Getting off and going. <laughs> and you all can run out and get back to the boat safely if you would like. Yeah. <laughs> What's and that? Double boat. dash. Yes, I think I will. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes. I please. have 25 feet of movement. I scoop <laughs> Fissile up and put them on my back. <laughs> and you can get out carefully, quickly, and silently. As you hear the echoing laughter of the witch to the west, you make yourself back into the water. Turns out the wind- whimsical witch to the west was also quite wicked. I was just about to say that. Um, Dan, do me a favor. Don't get any crap in your eye, please. <laughs> I, would, I, just go. I really don't want to go back there. Please. No, not preferable. Uh, do you have any like glasses or anything? You seem to uh, be the only one in this crew that I have them. Yeah. Have a what? Glasses. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> the holy readers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's try and be a bit more careful about getting. Gunking eyes and, and stuff. Yeah, yeah it's uh, and, yeah. Like. <laughs> I mean, are your legs gonna be okay trudging through that then? Uh, probably yes. I think uh, I think uh, if, if even if not, we'll look for a healer in the next plane. But first, we yeah. need to get to that guard and give them their brother's <laughs> yeah. art so that, that they. Heart. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd like to get this thing off my back real quick. Uh, <laughs> you can still see the bag like beating. <laughs> That's kind of huh. gross. Yeah. It's a little unnerving, I'll be I'll admit. I've seen some shit, but this is a little bit much of even me. <laughs> maybe his like, his brother is Yeah, maybe his brother is a monkey. L- 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 Let's get that monkey no, off your I, back. I, I can, I, no, I, no, I, I was gonna say I could I I can sense some kind of like I can sense some kind of shit house pun and it would just really <laughs> nail in the fact that we're in hell and I was gonna tell you to not say it, but you could just kinda of power through there, didn't you? <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think also Thistle is very visibly like they've just been recounting all of their times in war, so they're just a little bit like deflated. <laughs> but yeah, uh, what direction did they say? Um, so the direction of the city, which you can see clearly in the distance, um. You would know, Tia and Alaria, that the gates are in the front, but you also know that there are various barbed devils that fly around and attack as you go to the front. So you would know to be ready for any surprise attacks. Yeah, I'll have my daggers out. Pull the staff out. Just making sure, seeing if there's anybody around that might even try to attack. Roll me a perception check. Perception. Okay, let's see. Hold up. <clears throat> Get this again. Straight. Ooh, not good. Eleven. All Eleven. Right. Well, everyone else can roll one as well if you would like. As they're as she's That's looking around. Uh, perception? A solid mm-hmm. six. You're good at this. Your clear eyes, they're too clear. <laughs> 14. Hey, that's not bad for me. 15. Alaria yeah, so me. and Thistle, you see two barbed devils flying in your direction. They spotted us, or is it? You are very close now to the gates. Right, I, I'll point these barbed devils out. It's like, right, well, looks like we might have company. I get ready to play baseball. <laughs> I also get ready to play baseball. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's and as the these creatures fly down to you, once again, will everyone make me initiatives? Okay, here we go. Better, 14. Oh my god, it's double digits. It's the 10. Yeah, it's better than the 2. Double, double digits. Two. 14. Oh, there we go. Who has the higher dexterity? What's your dex? Uh, plus 3. Or wait, I'm so sorry. Let me double check. Yeah, plus three. I have plus three. I've my dex is seventeen. I have plus three on mine. My dex score is only a sixteen. 
Okay, so Tia will go okay, first. Okay, I got it. And that's a good seven. Thank you. <laughs> Solid. All right, and they've got an 11 and an eight, so they are not going first. But they immediately swoop in to melee range to attack. And first and foremost, Tia, you can react as they come flying directly at you. Okay. Uh, so how many are there? There are two of them? There are two how many are, devils. Yes. Two. Um, how close am I to the, to the nearest one? Um, it is flying directly into your direction by the time you can swipe directly at it. Its claws are out, ready to go. The one is okay. kind of hanging back. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and attack the one that's attacking me. Okay, let's see. Here we go. 12 plus. Okay, 15 to hit. 15 just hits. Just hits. Okay, good. Okay, so let me go ahead and do. And I don't have. I don't have sneak attack your, on this. Your entire party is in the boat with you, so you will have sneak attack for this fight. Okay, awesome. All right, here we go. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 3d6. 3, 4, 4, 8, 3, 11. Okay, 12 damage. Okay, excellent. Is there anything else you can do with your turn? Uh, let's see. That was my, my action was to attack, Okay. right? Okay, bonus action. I'll go ahead and attack again. Is that okay? Yep, you just can't okay. do the bonus action damage for the... Okay, the so just action. go ahead and get to the straight. Okay. Let's see. Uh, that didn't do very well. 10? 10. 10 to hit, does not hit. Does not hit. Okay, so we're good. All right, Elyria, there is now one in your boat. You are muted, my dear. Oh, you're muted. You're muted on Zoom, my dear. You're muted. You have to unmute Sorry, yourself. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Always happens once. Um, right? Once. So he's not flying anymore. So he gets one. The first um, one I'm is going to ship with you. Excellent. I'm going to um, use my quarter staff two hundred twice. Okay. And I'd like to burn a key point to use stunning strike. There you if go. I can. Um, that is yeah. a 13. And a 15. The 15 just hits. All right. So the damage is 11 damage. Okay. Um, and then um, he needs to make a constitution saving throw or be stunned until the end of my next turn. So 23. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, <laughs> with my bonus action i will make uh uh an, an unarmed strike with that um okay. like with my elbow kind of reach one good elbow. elbow oh no it was not a good elbow it was a natural one <laughs> and it oh. elbows you back it's elbows your elbows crack into each other and it does not oh. feel good ouch that's gonna leave a mark <laughs> not funny. all right not funny and then done. The creature will strike. It will do one claw, one, two claw attacks, one at Tia, one at Illyria, and then it will slash its tail from over its head to attempt to hit Thistle. So the first one is Tia. Okay. 24 to hit. Yep, that hits. That definitely hits. For 12 damage. Ow. Uh, okay. That's included oh, some critical eight. damage. Oh, no, no, that's yeah, critical it's damage. Eight. It's only eight. You're right. Ooh. Thank you. I was like, oh, God, what have I done? I didn't realize it did two different damages. Okay. Still good. Still good. All right. The other claw goes to Illyria. An 18. That definitely hits. Uh, can I, am I within five feet of that yes. one? Yes. Can I mm -hmm. in, uh, uh, use my reaction to use my protection uh, yes. ability? So I, uh, I impose disadvantage. So the 12, so 12 hit. Uh, no, 12 does not hit. You take no damage. The tail strikes at you. This will for 21. Yeah, definitely hits. 10 piercing. The other barbed devil in your direction, Dan, shoots two motes of flame at you. Hey. It doesn't, it, neither of them hit you though, and it splashes into the water, and the water begins to grow very hot around you, and I would like you to make a constitution saving throw. Oh. I oh, thought you were going to say it splashes into his eyes. 
I was like, not again! <laughs> like, I'm not going back. back. Not going back. Not going back. Not going back. Yeah! Yes. Yeah, baby. Wow. You'll have this damage then. So you'll take seven fire damage. Actually, is there any specialties for crit critting a saving throw? I don't know. I don't know. That's okay. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just say you're unwarmed because I don't think you'll ever roll another constitution crit. I'll just say you were undamaged. <laughs> <laughs> because this is a one-time thing. This is a one-time thing. I will say that you will not take damage for a nat 20. Woo! Never happening again in your life. Enjoy. Nope. Uh, Never <laughs> again. Enjoy um, this moment, Scrat. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm relishing in it, honestly. <laughs> Thistle, you may act. These are Alrighty. fiends. Alrighty, yeah, as they see these fiends come towards them, they're gonna kind of like take this axe and it's like, alrighty, by the loyal fury's light, come have a go if you think you're hard enough. And it just lights up as they are going to run forward and swing at this one that just hit, a, hit them. And you it are. is now good. Go destroy. Alrighty. 22 hits. 22 hits. Alrighty. Um, I don't know what I'll do with the attack. 12. Alrighty, 16, 16 hits. Alrighty, I'm going to pump a level of Divine Smite into each of these. Okay. Uh, let me Ooh. just make sure I've got enough. Okay. Uh, and because they're fiends, it's 3D. Alrighty. Do the first one first. Uh, 15 slash and 6 radiant and then divine smite so that's one hit okay okay is this thing still standing it is still standing Alrighty. then second one very good you can roll out divine, divine smite radiant damage yeah there we go <laughs> all right all righty <laughs> please hold on one moment please it's okay. I'm about to. That's 74 can... points of damage. 74 points of damage. Wow. Whoa. Paladins, baby. <laughs> and with that kind of 70. radiant wow. damage, immediately striking yeah. into this beast. Can you describe how you single-handedly? My, I mean, your friends did help you some good amount, but you quite clearly cleaved this beast. Paladins, yep. Paladins, baby. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think that stunning strike that Illyria did has a bit more effect than even though it kind of shook it off. So taking that opportunity as it uh, as it kind of stumbles just a little bit, uh, this will just kind of darts around the boat and just cleaves up in a diagonal. And it's just it's like carving through butter, like with this glowing axe that's currently glowing with like this torchlight. And this creature turns to ash. Nice. As it is just torn asunder. And as this happens, the other barbed devil kind of looks scared. It's floating about 15 feet away, and it's just kind of, oh, God. Yeah. You can Thistle see it like, on face. Thistle takes his axe and just kind of flips it in their hands, just kind of like, I missed you. <laughs> Uh, Dan, it is your turn. There is one about 15 feet flying around. I tried to boil you. I am going to use my word of radiance and turn on the glowies. Turn on the glowies. Uh, I probably don't get sneak attack, but, uh, it's more for the effect as I cry, Flee, you <laughs> fool! You are outmatched! We will beat you a second time. It fails. Roll me an intimidation. Am I helping? You can <laughs> roll with advantage. You can roll it with <laughs> advantage because your friend did literally just do 70 damage in one attack. It's still a 12. You <laughs> ping it with that radiant damage and it kind of falters for a minute, but it looks a little bit too, too determined still. And it is now your turn, unless there's something else you can do. Dan? Dan? Uh, is anyone around me looking out? I'm uh, badly out. A little bit, yeah. A little bit Not out? Not super badly. I'm out of, I'm at 24 out of 34. Uh, but I can also heal myself if I need to. I will 
Ping a bonus action and healing word towards Fizzle. There you go. Words of holy. Uh, again, it no, does not get sneak damage. <laughs> eight health points. Eight health. You heal me for eight points, but then you stab me. <laughs> I love you. And you can heal for the eight. Um, Tia, it is now your turn. Okay. And how how far is the second one from me? It is flying 15 feet above Please you. Do you have any ranged weapons to use? Nope. All I have is a short sword and a da and my daggers. I don't have any ranged weapons. I mean, you could throw your daggers if you'd like, or you can hold your action until it gets closer. I'm going to go ahead and hold my action. Okay. I'll hold my action until it gets closer. Okay. So you won't be able to use your bonus action, but if it flies in a melee range, you can attack okay. before it attacks. It'll, tr it'll, yeah, it'll trigger the trigger one. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and get and hold my action until it gets in range. All right. Valeria, is there anything you can do from a distance? Um, no, but I would like to spend a key point and use patient defense. Um, so it'll have disadvantage um, as the dodge action as a bonus action. And then I'm going to hold my action until it gets within my range to hit it two-handed with my staff. Yeah. Wacky, wacky. And it will. It'll soar at you. And as it does, Tia, you can act first. You can do your okay. dagger attack if you'd like. All right, I'm going to go ahead and attack. Ah, five. Does not hit. Does not hit at all. At um, okay. So. Did I attack? Do you get two actions? Do you get two attacks? No, I just get the one. It would be then your turn, Larry. All right. And I'm going to swing at it twice. And probably miss the highest one was a nine. Yep. Unfortunately, both of you are Ow. just, it rushes at top speed. And as it does, it will make its multi attacks. Um, one claw will be again at uh, Tia. Okay. So that, um, nope, that was wrong button. That's the multi attack. Uh, so 16, does 16 hit you? Yep. 16 definitely hits. That's four. The next claw attack will actually be at Thistle because Thistle just got okay. in combat range. A 15. Thistle. No okay. misses. All right. And the tail attack will be at disadvantage because Ilaria has the dodge action. So a 17. Does a 17 hit? That still hits. <laughs> For 11 piercing. Yeah. Uh, I did the can victory I use... dance too soon. <laughs> Can I do uh, one of my channel divinities to give my? Oh, wait, do I only get one? I think I only get one. I can't remember how many I get as a paladin. I think it's only one. Never mind. I was gonna. All right. Trying to impose double disadvantage on me. <laughs> I see you. Uh, but it is no, your. It oh no! It is your turn to attack, though. Alrighty. One um... one shot, my villain again, please. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I think this will be like, all right, well, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you one more chance to just uh, back away from this one. Sure you don't want to end up like your friend there. I just look down to this pile of ash. <laughs> he just looks at you. <laughs> Sorry, mate. And uh, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going <laughs> to... Sling at it. Uh... Yeah, uh, before I do, I'm going to, one second, let me just double check the thing. Uh, no, it doesn't do anything else. Alrighty, yeah, I'm just going to take two swings at it. Oops, that's not the attack button. Alrighty. Both hit. You know what? Let's have a look. Yeah, fuck it. I'm going to pump a level 2 Divine Smite into each of those. <laughs> so this is going to get messy. You are not joking. You are going to literally one-shot by. <laughs> the, if it is any consolation, ah. I can't do that for the rest of the session. So, um, so 18. Wow! That's a shit. That's a, that was else. for us. That, that was an oh. There we are. Okay, I rolled pretty atrociously, but let's do some math. That's still 52 damage. <laughs> and 52? you wow. cleave this creature quite well. 
But it still stands. Dang. 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 Uh, actually, as a bonus action, can I please cast the spell Compelled Duel? You can. Oh, wait, never mind. I just used all my... No, I can't because I have used all my spell slots because that is the Defiant Smite. Never ah. mind. Don't worry about that one. They, uh, it's all good. I just wanted to make it target me, but that's all good. I think it will anyway. <laughs> you have quite, quite earnestly pissed it off. <laughs> Dan, what are you feeling? Uh, well, if it is down at this level, I will just trot across and bop it with my mace. It seems the Fissile has done all the hard work. I will just boof. You can boof. Boof, 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 There we go. 23. One good bop. And uh, since, uh, since Fissile is within uh, range, I get sneak attack. Boof. For 16, very good damage. As you bop it, though, it still stands. I, I, I only get one attack on my turn. I'm multiclassed. It is uh, a bane. The curse. The curse of multiclass. The curse of multiclassing. Multi 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 All right. Well, that brings us to the top of the turn order, then, for Tia. The thing is still looking pretty hurt, though. Looking pretty hurt, but it definitely has a few more swings left within it. Okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and attack. Okay. All right. Ten. Mm -mm. Ten does not hit. You can try your bonus action to attack, though. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do the second attack. Whoops. Eleven. Does not hit either. Does not hit. Ah, really Creature does that. not want you to touch it. That one bit. Ah. Laria. Creature stands. <sighs> All right. Well, clickety clackety. I roll to attack it twice with my two handed. Very uh. good. Eighteen and a fourteen. What was the first one? Uh, eighteen and a fourteen. The eighteen will hit. All right, so that's going to be four damage. Beautiful. And then um, he's, I'm going to assume he's still standing, so I'm going to uh, dump another flurry of blows into him. Very good. Go. Right. Get two more unarmed strikes. One elbow, two elbow. Uh, 22 and a 17. Both hit. Excellent. And then I would like to... I'd like to have him make a strength saving throw and push him 15 feet away. He takes 11 damage. A 12. Ooh, ooh, he fails. All right, so you launch him with this elbow and Alaria may be tall, but Larry's not big compared to this creature. But the swing of her bow, her strong bow, launches this creature into the fluid, the goop. And as it does, it stands, but hands begin to grasp around it. These undead creatures grasping around this devil and begin to pull it into the yeah. sea below. And it is gone. Well, can't say I didn't try to give him a chance to kind of piss off, but... You did offer, I mean... Nicer than any of us would have probably done. Oh yeah, at least me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of part of my order. I meant to I meant to give everyone a chance at give everyone a chance at like redeeming themselves, but not be like an idiot about it. You know. <laughs> that seems fair. Can I look Fissile over? I I want to check they haven't lost heart. Ah. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'd like to hit Dare with my axe. Does that count as a feat? Does that count as a feat? Oh, oh, that bear. was a feat. <laughs> <laughs> that was really bad. Funny. That was bad. Ah, uh, uh, that was I bad. Have with, I have to deal with this for another session after this, <laughs> and <laughs> weekly. Weekly torture. Weekly no, torture. You, you are able to make it closer and closer to this city. It is standing on stacked 
pillars, similar to the one that the witch had, but you can tell that the ones at the bottom are just kind of struggling to keep on. And the tops of the city where the top beam is, is being held by large chains that go into the sky almost, almost unseeably into the top of this cavern, keeping it steady. But there is a small docking area and a single guard gate with a chained devil within. Oh. Hello. A team. Hello. <laughs> it looks to you, Thistle. And a, a fiery roar kind of comes out in place. Is it, who speaks? I know that Dan does, but does any, anyone else speak Infernal? I do. I do. Are you, uh, I'm a teacher. <laughs> Every... <laughs> so Thistle says, hello. <laughs> and all of you here. Traders do not enter through the main doorway. Do you want to die? Not today. Traders. Uh, actually, I trade specifically with you. I don't trade. I am the guard. I hear you have a certain piece of an amulet, uh, maybe, and uh, your brother might be missing an art. He grips a chain that kind of just appears in his hands. What are you talking about, well, Centaur? Does that seem familiar or not? I was told a chain devil that has a brother who is missing an art and might have an amulet piece to trade with, with the witch woman of the West. Oh, so you've met with Maze and survived. Interesting. Yep. Oh, and yeah, also, uh, one second, and I just fill Fissel in with everything we just said. <laughs> oh, does that one was... not speak Infernal? No, they no, it's No, uh, it's been a very regular hindrance for me. I should probably <laughs> take a feet in that or something. <laughs> <laughs> he coughs and in very broken common. So you saw the witch, you lived. What uh, about yeah. Brother's Heart? Uh, yeah. Give me a sec. Uh, I'm gonna make sure I stand a bit back so uh, you can't like snatch it away or anything like that. But I uh, take the heart out and just kind of unfold, unpeel it from the, the fabric. And it covering. does, and it's sticky. And as you peel it, he the chain disappears. Just turn it to see the writing. I'll be damned. Huh. So she wants the. Amulet? Piece of the uh, amulet or the yeah. heart. Yeah. And, I, and I speak this in, in Infernal so that he can understand. Do, do you want me to give it to you or am I to deliver it to her? Uh, to me, to us. I see. One moment, please. And he begins sifting through. And as he begins to sift through things, uh, Dan, you've kicked into something underneath in the sludgy fluid. And it feels valuable. What? <laughs> By that hoof feel, you know? <laughs> yeah. you, when you hit it, it, it like clatters. It feels kind of like rough stones in a sack. Going to surreptitiously bend down and pick it up using my uh, mace again. Fishing. You pick it up and you fish it out and you're holding a small satchel. And as you do, the creature returns with a simple piece of the amulet. Oh. Do it at once. Yeah, yeah same time, right? All right. Oh. And this creature is massive and the hands are like larger than your face as carefully drops it into your palm as it clutches the heart. And as he does, he kind of glares at you, squeezes close, and disappears into the ethereal plane. That was easy. Hey! Hey. Gotcha. All right, well, let's put this, put, put this with the rest of it. And I found this sack, it seems valuable. I believe we agreed that we would give you stuff if we found it. Ooh, what's in it? I don't know, I haven't looked. Uh, I'll uh, take a look, look and make sure it's not like a thing of rocks. <laughs> Thistle, <laughs> Thistle, what you see is gemstones. Oh. What kind of gemstones are we talking about? 
All right, I'm going to take some and just pour it into my hands. Just a, Ooh, just a couple. Ooh, shiny. They are shiny. They are luxurious. They seem to be almost like family heirlooms of sorts. Right, are these familiar back. to me? Tia, they are extremely familiar to you. Can I take a look at these, please? Oh, yeah, right. I was going to be real. Yeah, kind of plan on giving them to you anyway. Uh, promise is a promise, you know? Tia, as you hold these in your hand, it is almost like you are back at home. And you can see your mother showing this to you as a child. These precious gems that she has kept for her entire life. And are laying them out. And you can see your tiny little tiefling hands wrap around them as you hold them up to the light in your home. This is what I was looking for. Oh. Well, it looks like we're pretty eventful day, I guess. It looks like a lot of us have been found some things that we're looking for. Hey, I found hey. my eye. We found another piece of the amulet. You found some nice gems. I found oh long lasting friendship. Yay! <laughs> uh, the real treasures were the friends we made along the way. <laughs> I don't know. One of those friends does 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 Mace count as one of those friends? Like uh, I mean, long last. Uh, <laughs> depends. Is that is uh, she the kind of friend you want to keep though? At a distance. At a distance. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Long distance. Yes. Long Ten distance friends. Well, long mean. distance. Yeah. I mean, like we can. I, I'm sure there's some like sending spells or something that we can keep in touch with. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. That's fine. Skype it. I guess yeah. you never know when you when the witch can come in handy. Uh, so, the yeah. sort of friend that you keep, you know, at least written correspondence with in case things turn sour. Right, in case yeah, you get well, next to your eye. Like, when yeah. you get eye rot. When you get eye rot. Yeah. yeah. When you get eye rot. <laughs> and speaking yeah, of yeah. the eye rot, Alaria, this is an information that only you would know. Because mm -hmm. you're, a, you're a clever girl and you know how to get out of things. You know that there is only one exit from this place to another, and it is a small drain somewhere below the water behind the city. It is a small, large cork, and when it's pulled back, the people who are near it get sucked within to the next layer of hell. Um, I, are you are are you all going down further? Uh, yeah, I think that's our next stop. Yeah, I, I believe we're trying to find one piece on every plane of L. That seems to be um, the way it's been going. Well, there's only one way to get there. Um, if you want to go to the lower plane, um, it's behind the city. Um, it's it's like a plug that you have to pull below the water, and it'll just yeah suck you right down in there. Oh, uh, it sounds easy, right? Really messy, but yeah, it's easy. Sounds, Sounds like a water park. It should be fun. Messy. Oh, yeah, cover your uh, eyes, though. Cover your eyes. Keep, yeah, keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. Yeah. Keep your mouth I would closed. It. Breathe I out the whole knows. time. All orifices, yeah. perhaps. Just like, you yeah, know, maybe just, put it around the head or something. Yeah, does anyone have, like, a, some bubble wrap or something that we can just wrap to it up? <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not No. No, bubble wrap. It does do like it hell hellish bubble wrap. You try and pop it, but it just it doesn't. It just kind of squishes down. The unpoppable bubble wrap. Yeah, it's just constant uh -huh. disappointment. <laughs> so much dissatisfaction. And you can leave them there if you would like. Absolutely. Um, it's this way. <laughs> Very good travel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't do the coconuts. <laughs> Very good. I and should get some coconuts. I should. <laughs> <laughs> Very as strong. you make it to this entrance to pull this cork, does anyone else get in the water with Dan and Thistle? Well, I don't have much to do here. Go on. I wouldn't mind getting in the water. All right. I'll do it too. And with all of the treasures to be found within Noros, the cork is pulled. And all of you in this disgusting fluid are kind of pulled in as the cork seals behind you. And you all slide down together. 
into this huge kind of sewer tunnel. And as you do, it kind of splits off. And in one direction, Tia and Ilaria slide. And Thistle, you're able to hold on to Dan as it splits into another way, and you're able to follow him down into the pit. Ilaria and Tia, you land in a small drainage area and are able to make your way into the city of uh, within Phlegathos, the fourth layer of the house, where there is debauchery, beauty, <laughs> sex, and lots of money to be spent. There we go. It hey, is money. shiny, it is gorgeous, and you can start the next stage of your adventure. Thistle and Dan, as you make your way through, you slide and you slide and you slide. And you also land in a sewerish area. But as you make your way up to the city streets, you don't see debauchery, joy, sex, rock and roll. I mean, you do, but you're much holier than them. And you, it's, it's the rough one. It is a rough place. It is a whole room of a fade to black in this small area as they all stop to look at you. Like, the hell are you doing here, man? And that's where we will end. So, yeah. four. <laughs> I don't know. We never changed the name of the episode. We're still in Argo 37 on my screen. So I don't know if it's because I didn't refresh, but I think we're on episode four. Yeah, I'm Dan, my sure screen set. Yeah, mine's, mine's got it up. So. Oh, does oh, good. it? Oh, okay, yeah. good. Whew. I didn't know if it's because I didn't refresh or what. Okay, yeah, no, the Swamps of Monaros. Very good. And there it is. Awesome job. Great. Ooh. Thank you so much. We did Thank it. Thank you. We did all the things. Uh, so. <laughs> We'll go round again. Uh, we'll talk about who we are, where we can find each other, and all the wonderful things that we do. Uh, and uh, we'll go the opposite way around the screen this time and start with C for Seven. Okay. Um, C for Seven. I'm C for Seven on Twitter. I'm also C for Seven on uh, on Tumblr. If you want to go ahead and check out my, some of my writing and some of my art, I post uh, stuff on Twitter. And my Instagram is artistmum1. And that's spelled A-R-T-I-S-T-M-U-M with a number one. Yeah. So uh, check out my stuff on Twitter and Instagram. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you for playing with us. We had fun. Thank you. It's been years since I've played. So this is, this well, is I'm awesome. glad you were able to sit down and play with us then. It was very good. Thank yeah. you. And feel free to pop your links in the chat there. If you've got like your Tumblr and Instagram links, chuck them in the chat. That'd be great. Uh, awesome. I will. Next around the screen, we have Ali at Queen Rizza. Hey, um, thank you for inviting me. I had a ton of fun. Um, I am Queen Riza on almost all platforms, uh, Instagram, Twitter. So both platforms, uh, Queen underscore Riza 214 on Twitter. I mainly post about Dungeons and Dragons. If you check out my Instagram, I post about my animals and uh, Dungeons and Dragons and makeup. So, you know, pretty simple over here. <laughs> Sounds Very sounds good. great. Like sounds heaven. wonderful. Yeah. Like uh, next around the screen we have Avery at Matbat who will be seeing again very shortly. Yes, I'm I'm on the next game too. Yeah. You know, yes. Hello, my name's Avery. I go by Matbat online pretty much everywhere of some like variation. Uh, some places let me put the underscore in. Some places don't. It's fine. Um, and I'm an artist and cosplayer. Uh, my commissions are currently open. So if you have a character that you really want drawn, uh, my pin tweet has uh like has a commission form just fill that form out and uh you'll be added to the queue and once i'm up to you i'll email you and we'll get in touch um there is a bit of a queue right now though so it'll be a bit of a wait but i will get to everyone so yay um uh but yeah what else do i do i yeah i am also i also play on this channel again in the next session i play it with the rise of the wardens where i play cecilia amladaris who is a tevinta mage who is having a rough time of it always. And um, I'm also found over on the Tales, uh, Tales from the Grim channel on uh, Monday e evening. I'm sorry, I have to do the time zone thing in my head. Pretty sure it's Monday evenings. Uh, playing uh, Urban Shadows, uh, where I play Evangeline, who is the aware, who is the one mortal in our group who is also having a rough time of it. And I will be starting, I think it starts on the 11th at 6 PST, I think on the Off the Table channel, I'll be playing um, a Lady Blackbird campaign called The Dark Flight of the Blue, where we're playing a uh, pirate pirate game 
where everyone else has chosen to be the typical like hot pirate thing. I wanted to be a monster girl, so <laughs> very good. Oh yeah, yeah. we love it. Awesome. Hey, something different. Something different. Yeah. yeah. Check that out. It is. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Avery, but it's an expansion uh, on uh, what we did previously in the Wild Blue yeah. sort of same universe. Yes. Um, I, yeah, same I, universe as the Adventures of the Wild Blue, um, but uh, it's a prequel to it, and we're exploring like the pirate dark side of things instead. So it's it'll, before that game. Yeah, so check it out. Um, I, I I wish I'd been able to play in it as well. Damn it. Um, lastly, around the screen we have Bree. Hey guys, it's NPC Bree, Witch Queen of the Greyhawk channel. Uh, I've had such an uh, excellent time today. My throat is shot. I wonder why. <laughs> I'm sure my family will have a lot of questions when I leave this bedroom, but I had so much fun with all of you. Thank you so much for playing with me. Um, such a blessing. You can find out where I stream on Twitter at NPC Bree. Um, I'm here. I'm on the Greyhawk channel and I'm on Soul Bear RPG. On my regular Twitch channel, I started streaming League of Legends because I've become that person. Um, but you can't stop me because I have fun. Um, but other than that, just keep track of my Twitter for more information. Um, yeah, thanks guys for playing with me. It was a total blast. Thank you for DMing. Yeah, that was an awesome time. Thank you. I'm so glad. As for me, everyone, I'm, I, I have a bot to spam all my links at you. So check out all the links that are being spammed at you, all the places you can find us, interact with us and our community and support us if you wish to. Um, also check out our sponsors, Mage Hand Press, uh, who make the Dark Matter uh, expansion for 5e, where you can play D&D in space. And the Deck of Many, uh, who currently have a promotion running on their Deck of Many animated spell cards, which are cards which cast as you cast. Um, you may know them from the other products, such as the Deck of Many Things. Very popular. Um, that's all, folks. Uh, so, we are going to go on a raid. Um, if anyone has a, a raid cry for us, uh, that would be fantastic. Otherwise, we'll go with our standard raid cry of Let's Have Locomotions. Uh, and uh, we uh, please join us. Let's go, and, let's go and take a bunch of viewers over to someone and, and, and give them a good time. Um, yeah, uh, thank you for coming along, everyone. Um, we will see you very, very soon. Uh, we'll be back in about an hour for um, uh, for Rise of the Wardens, uh, and we'll be back at the same time next week for for, for more through hells and back. All the yeah. words, you got it. I did it. I did it. I did the thing. I feel accomplished. Uh, I'll catch you later, everyone. Uh, keep on up with your emotions. Bye.